Um, there's been a lot going on in the news. There's a lot that I wanted to discuss. Um, what we are going to do is um, discuss real briefly, as an opening, what's going on with our brother, Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Has anybody been keeping up with the news lately? Y'all know what's going on, right? What's going on? Somebody stand up and tell me what's going on with, with our brother. Brother right here. Say your name when you stand up. Give him the mic. Shalom, uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, Jabari. Uh, Ice Cube is lighting up Twitter and social media with uh, facts about uh, Israel and uh, the nation and us being uh, chosen people. I like what you said. You see the word that he used? He said facts. Facts, not fiction, although they're trying to portray, portray it as something fiction. He said facts. Uh, let's start off with that. Let's start off with, um, let's see if what our brother was saying was factual or if it was fiction. Maybe he's hallucinating. All right, let's see. Let's start off with that, um, Jonathan. I just sent it to you. Let's start off with the news article. Let me, well, can you see that? All right, I need you to read. Nice glasses. By the way, oh, are those reading glasses? Those are my everyday scenes. Very glasses. good. Very good. <laughs> Jewish groups react to more anti Semitic tweets by Ice Cube. At a time in this country when we need to pull together, bigoted imagery on the internet is the last thing we need, says Benai Barith International. So, Benai Barith is an is in, um, is a, um, Amalekite organization. Go ahead. Rapper and actor Ice Cube has been getting a chilly reception, including from Jewish and pro-Israel groups, for sharing on Twitter anti-Semitic images amid the backlash over the death of 46-year-old African-American George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police. On June 6, as part of expressing support for the Black Lives Matter movement, Ice Cube, whose real name is O'Shea Jackson, posted to his 5.3 million Twitter followers the caricature of a group of white-skinned older men, mm -hmm. some with large hooked noses, sitting around a Monopoly-like game board with a fully bearded man counting dollar bills. The so they're taking this drawing as being um, anti-Semitic, but notice it just gave you a depiction of what the caricatures look like, the people in the drawing, all right? They said they uh, supposedly had hooked noses. I didn't see that, and one of them I believe had a beard, just one, but go ahead. The board is on top of bold, naked backs of a group of mostly black men. Mm -hmm. The image first appeared in mural form in London. So go back up, okay, it said that, no, no, so I could read it, go down right there. It said, uh, naked backs of a group of mostly black men. Why, because so-called blacks, we are the what? We are the burden bearers of society, That's right. okay? We are the consumers of society. Okay, go ahead. The image first appeared in mural form in London, igniting controversy in 2018, following then British Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn expressing support for the artist Mere, Mere One, Kaylin Ackerman. Ackerman. Corbyn later apologized and the image was removed. Mm -hmm. The caricature, caricature is identical to anti-Semitic propaganda used by Hitler and the Nazis to whip up hatred that led to the massacre of millions of Jews. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. This extends to the table these figures are sat at, resting on human bodies mm -hmm. as the Nazis also depicted, according to journalist and filmmaker Michael Siegel. Mm -hmm. Siegel of Come on. The, the, the Simon... Weisenthal, Weisenthal. Weisenthal Center con condemned the tweet in a reply to it. Shane, two years ago we met with Ice Cube to turn a new page. Now when it counts, instead of using his, excuse me, his notoriety mm -hmm. to promote peace in a fractured America, he regresses to classic anti-Semitic tropes. Okay, now let's deal with the word anti-Semitic. Wow. Let's deal with the word anti-Semitic. Somebody explain that to me. And I want a scripture. Somebody explain that. Officer Yakub. Yes, sir. Uh, the term anti-Semitic is a term really that's used um, against us or used as a lie to try to say that they're the only Shemites. Okay, explain that. Somebody might know, might not know what is a Shemite. What is a Shemite? Uh, Shemites are the lineage or those that are born out of the lineage of Shem, 
uh, of one of the sons of Noah. Mm -hmm. So all of the people that come out of Shem would be known as Shemitic or Semitic people today. Okay. All right. Let's give me a scripture. Is Abraham Shemitic? Abraham is Shemitic. Abraham was Shemitic, right? Yes, sir. And who were the children of Abraham? Somebody else. Who were the children of Abraham? Brian. And I want a scripture, too. Was the Amalekites the only Shemitic nation on earth? In Moab, who are the Chinese, are Shemitic. Yeah. Ammon is Shemitic. Oh, uh, Ishmael? Ishmael is Shemitic. Yeah. Who else? Because when you hear this term, they normally apply it to Amalek, Amalek white Hebrew Israelis, Esau. Okay? But that term, we can use it for ourselves as well. So if Ice Cube is anti an anti-Semite, that means he hates himself. Why is he still breathing? How come he has not killed himself? Surely he loves himself, right? Who else? Give me some more. Give me Genesis, Genesis 25, verse 1. Let's get some more. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 1. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him. So Abraham took a wife, and her name was who? Keturah. Keturah, come on. And she bare him Zemran, and Jokshan, and Medan, mm -hmm. and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begat Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim, and Let Letushim, Letushim, and Leumim. Le Le and the sons of Midian, Ephah, mm -hmm. and Ephur, and Hanak. So and these, these were the Medes. These were the Medes. Go ahead. And Abida, and Elde, and Eldea. All these were the children of Keturah. So how many children were named? Count it. Count it out loud, Yaku. Yes, sir. Zimron, so uh, one. Jokshan, two. Medan, three. Midian, four. Ishbak, five. And Shua, six. So you have six outside of Moab, Ammon, Ishmael. So there's many Shemites. There's many Shemites. Okay? Go back to the article. The Simon Weisenthal Center condemned the tweet in a reply. In a reply to it, shame. Two years ago, we met with Ice Cube to turn a new page. Now when it counts... Instead of using his notoriety to promote peace in a fractured America, he regresses to classic anti-Semitic tropes. Mm -hmm. So that's squash. We already know that's BS, that term. All right? Because there's many Shemitic nations. Go ahead. And Ice Cube himself is Shemitic. He's not Hamitic. Okay? Go ahead. So that's the, show the, um, the picture that they're talking about. Okay, remember they said about men with full beards? How many men there do you have with full beards? Just one. So there's some kind of guilt conscience to where somebody would look at this and think, okay, they're talking about, um, they're talking about white Hebrew Israelis. Mm. No. Just because the, the guy all the way on the left has a full beard, you know how many people have full beards? You have people from, uh, what's the name of that place? Iceland and uh, Netherlands and who think that they're Vikings that still rock their full beards. Now the beard is, is back in style. So how could you look at that unless there's some guilt conscience, unless there's some truth that you don't want to be exposed mm -hmm. to say, oh, this is anti-Semitic. Okay, go ahead, read that. Uh, on June 10th, Ice Cube tweeted a photo that appeared to suggest that the black cube of Saturn, which which conspiracy theorists claim to be a magical symbol, is within the Star of David. That same day, the rapper posted on Twitter an image of hieroglyphics portraying dark-skinned ancient Israelites in slavery in Egypt. A caption above the picture reads, Hebrew Israelites, slaves in ancient Egypt. So how is this anti-Semitic? These are actual drawings in the pyramids, on the walls in Egypt. Some of them have been whitewashed, but not all of them. How is this anti-Semitic? Look at that. Look at this right here. These are, this is not a comic book. This is real stuff that Ice Cube was posting. But the white Hebrew Israelis are mad as hell. Go down. Go ahead. 
In a tweet on Wednesday, Ice Cube stood by his post. This is Cube. My account has not been hacked. I speak for no organization. Mm. I only speak for the meek people of the earth. I only speak for the meek people of the earth. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Go ahead. We will not expect crumbles from your table. Mm. We have to power we have to power of Almighty God backing us all over the earth. All praises. Go ahead. No more talking. Repent, he tweeted. Wow. No more talking. Repent. Yes. All praises. And guess what? You're going to get a lot of, of people of status that's going to repent. Remember Nicodemus? Remember Cornelius? Joseph of Arimathea? Okay, but they don't need to be on the, front, the forefront of the battle. They could let us do it because they do have a lot to lose. They could support us on the back end and keep the commandments. Go ahead. Jewish leaders must publicly condemn these anti-Semites by name. You hear that? Jewish leaders must publicly condemn these anti semites All he did was post a picture, post a drawing. And we're going to find out if what he was saying was actual, was, was factual or was it fiction. Because they're saying, you this dude is, he's hallucinating, he's hateful, and everything is untrue. Meanwhile, those same images that he had are in Egypt today and in many books of archaeology. Go ahead. At a time in this country when we need to pull together, bigoted imagery on the internet is the last thing we need. Benai Barith International told Jew, Jewish News Syndicate, promoting hateful, hateful stereotypes is not the answer to the national crisis we are in. The tweets exemplify Ice Cube's anti-Semitic history. Ice Cube's 1991 song, No Vaseline, include lyrics such Damn. as, it's a, <laughs> it's a case of divide and conquer, because you let a Jew break up my crew and get rid of that devil real simple. Put a bullet in his temple, because you can't be the, the Inga for, li, for life crew. With a, white Jew, with a white Jew telling you what to do, pulling wolves, to you pulling wolves with your scams, now I gotta play Silence of the Lambs. Mm. The rap group NWA, which Ice Cube was a member of, had a manager named Jerry Heller, who was Jewish. Heller died in 2016 at the age of 65, 75. In 2015, Ice Cube, after a rabbi he allegedly bumped into outside a Detroit casino, told the rapper to watch where he was going, allegedly told his entourage to assault him. The rabbi accused Ice Cube of uttering anti-Semitic epithets for wearing a kefir. On May 11th, Ice Cube posted a picture of him and Louis Farrakhan and wished the Nation of Islam leader a happy birthday. Farrakhan has an extensive history of making anti-Jewish remarks such as, I'm anti-termite and that Hitler was a very great man. Zionist Organization of America President Mort Klein told JNS that he was concerned, as all people should be, with Ice Cube's ugly Jew hatred combined with a pro-BDS Black Lives Matter group calling Israel a genocidal apartheid state. He said that Jewish leaders and rabbis who have been silent must immediately and publicly condemn these anti-Semites by name. Well, before they do that, why don't they invite us to a public debate? Why don't they do that? Notice they're the only ones that's quiet, because I know they see Israel on the rise, true Israel, but nobody have yet reached out to IUIC to say, you know what? I'm a rabbi of such and such, and what you're saying is lies. We want to debate the bishop and the deacons. Come. They won't do it. They will not do it. They will never do that. And that's an open challenge to Amalek. They will never do that. Why? Because they will expose themselves. Okay, get me, um, get me the um, the picture that I sent you, Jonathan, with uh, Platonomy as Pharaoh. Because there's another picture going around with um, Napoleon that he posted with Napoleon blowing the lips off the Sphinx, and they're saying that that um, was due to um, Arab conquest. And there's many books that say the same thing. So I said, okay, that's cool. You could, you could hold that. You could hold that, Esau. But how do you explain Ptolemy? Because they have a history of whitewashing right there, that one. You'll see the pharaoh. You'll see it. Just read it so you could click on the right one. That's it right there. There is a history of whitewashing and destroying the original black artifacts. Okay. Now, was Pharaoh our people? No, that was Ham. Okay, that was Mizraim or Mizraim. 
Okay, those are not my people. But the point is that Esau has a history of destroying our images and putting himself up as the persons. Okay, you had, um, hey, prime example is, is Jesus Christ. The, another example is the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites in the land of Israel today, posing as us. Okay? Let's get some more. Uh, you can click on any one to the left, a good one. There we go. Whichever one you decide. There we go. So look at this right here. This is an example. All right? This is the Platonic dynasty, brothers. And Platonomy was a Greek man. He was a Greek man. Who knows about Platonomy? Where can I read about Platonomy? Uh, you can read about Platonomy in the book of Daniel. You can read about him in uh, Maccabees. In the Maccabees, yes. And he was one of the he was one of the young men that grew up with who? Uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, somebody oh, else. Uh, Ptolemy, uh, Cassander. Who did, he, who did he grow up with? Oh, uh, who gave Antiochus. him? Remember. Remember, he grew up with somebody that appointed his friends generals. Remember the four generals? Right, Ptolemy or Seleucus. No, who, who, who put him there? Oh, uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, yes. And guess what? He had sons after him, and they all followed the same thing. They put themselves up as Pharaoh, okay? They put themselves up as Pharaoh. What do you think happened to the other real statues of the Pharaohs and Sphinx? They got rid of it. That's why all of them are defaced. So now they're trying to blame it on, on, on Ishmael only. All right? Esau was a part of that thing. And it started with platonomy. It started with platonomy. So was, was uh, Ice Cube correct? Yes, he was. He was. He just got his time periods a little mixed up. But yes, he was absolutely correct. Okay? Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 1, 9 to 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. So the thing that has been, it is that that shall be. Meaning history repeats itself. History often repeats itself. Why? Because those same spirits are back on the earth. We've all been regenerated. Everybody is back here. What do you think there's going to be a judgment day? Go ahead. And that which is done is that which shall be done. That which is done is that which shall be done. Come on. And there is no new thing under the sun. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is that it? Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. Mm -hmm. it, hath been it hath been already of old time, which was before us. Read, keep reading. There is no remembrance of former So things. we don't have the remembrance of the former life. The only way we can relate to the former life is reading this, reading the history of our forefathers. That's it. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any remembrance mm -hmm. of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So what we do is we look at how the nations treated us in the past and we make a comparison to um, the way they're acting today. How are they treating the nation of Israel today? All right. The nation of Israel being so-called blacks, Hispanics and natives. We compare their actions from the Bible of the past, the things of the past, to the present, okay? Which, is, which will allow us to foretell the future, okay? Because a leopard can't change its spots, brothers. You cannot change the spots on a leopard. All right, let's read Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. We're going to jump back and forth different time periods. The book of Revelation. Chapter 2 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So Christ is telling us, Jesus Christ, the, Lord and, the only Lord and Savior, Son of God, is telling us, I know thy works and what? And tribulation uh -huh. and poverty. Come on. But thou art rich. So he's telling us, look, I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. But thou art rich. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? Mm -hmm. Who art Israelites? So basically, everything that Paul is about to say here only pertains to the Israelites. Nobody else. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption. Christ adopting us to the new covenant. That only pertains to the Israelites. Read. And the glory. The glory. All the glories that God promised us only pertains to the Israelites. Read. 
and the covenants and the covenants there was an old covenant and there's a new covenant both covenant is only for the israelites okay not all nation let's hold that hold that give me hebrews i want hebrews eight and eight just in case somebody out there with the christ the dumb christian thought might think that it's talking about all nations the new covenant is for all nations the book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. when I will make a new covenant. I will make a new covenant, come on. With the house of Israel. With the house of who? Israel. With the house of Israel, come on. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah, all 12 tribes back together. That one stick coming right back together. Okay, that's not talking about all nations. Go back now to Romans 9. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 4. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Come on. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Only to Israel. Read. And the glory. Only to Israel. And the covenant. Only to Israel. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. The law was only given to the nation of Israel. Read. And the service of God. And the service of God is only to the Israelites. Read. And the promises. The promises. The whole kingdom. The heaven on earth was only given to the Israelites. Go back to Revelation. So nobody should be confused now. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Mm -hmm. But thou art rich. Come on. And I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews. And, and I know the blasphemy. What's another word for blasphemy? Lies. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And are not. But are what? But are the synagogue of Satan. Mm, that's coming right out of Christ's mouth. He says, I know the blasphemies of them which say they are Jews and are not. But are the synagogue of Satan. Mm, that's beautiful right there. Get me Romans 3 verse 9. Jonathan, once you find that, you got it? Oh, yeah. Read Revelation, read Revelation 3 verse 9 first, and we're going to play it. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. This is what Christ is going to do when he gets back. Okay, come on. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, mm -hmm. which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Come on. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You hear what the Bible says? Christ is going to make them come to worship before our feet. Read. And to know that I have loved thee. And to know that I have loved thee. Who's the thee? The 12 tribes of Israel. Yes. Okay. Is that it? Yes, sir. Get me Isaiah 60 and 14. Isaiah chapter 60 and 14. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 60 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. So they might say, well, we haven't afflicted you. We don't have nothing to do with anything. We haven't afflicted you. But you guys are all part of the same dragon, the same red beast. So out of every Edomite nation, this one particular group, the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, they're the only ones that never did anything to the children of God. No, that is a damn lie. That is damn blasphemy according to the Bible. That's right. Okay? And everything that uh, the brother Ice Cube was posting, guess what, is not far-fetched. It's all reality. All right? It's all reality. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee mm -hmm. shall bow themselves down at the soles of all, thy feet. All they that despise thee. You know what that all they is making reference to? Hold that. Get me Malachi. Get me Malachi chapter 1 and I want verse 4. It says all they, not certain nations. The so you're trying to tell me just the French, the Portuguese, the British the English, Americans, or Babylon the Great, America, um, the Irish. Those are the only Edomite nations that had their hand in our captivity. But the white Hebrew Amalekites, no. They was in the corner and they wasn't doing nothing. Huh? 
yeah, they faultless. No, no. They all part of the same red dragon, man. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whereas Edom saith. Whereas Edom saith, come on. We are impoverished, mm -hmm. but we will return and build the desolate places. That happened during the Renaissance period. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of uh -huh. hosts. They shall build, mm -hmm. but I will throw down. Come on. And they shall call them. Them. Them means plural. Go ahead. The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. I mean, the beginning and the end of wickedness. Come on. And the people. And the what? The people. The people here is making reference to the same all they in Isaiah chapter 60, 60 verse 14. God is talking about all of Edom. All of Edom. Not just some. Okay, go ahead. The people mm -hmm. against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Now go back to Isaiah chapter 16, 60 verse 14. The book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 14. The sons also mm -hmm. of them that afflicted thee mm -hmm. shall come bending unto thee. And all they that and despise all they, thee. All the people, all of Esau. I don't care if they're Caucasian, British, English. You could add the American after all of that. Guess what? That's why they call them Jewish Caucasian or Jewish American. It's the same thing. All part of the same beast. Don't try to separate yourselves now. After you done gained all your wealth on black bodies. Now you want to separate yourself. The Lord sees all the evil. The Most High God, Hashem, Adonai, whatever name you want to call him. He sees all the evils done to his children under the sun. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Mm. And, oh, go ahead. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord. And they shall call us the city of the Lord. Not niggas and spicks and wetbacks. No more. Not African American. Because those are all bywords. That's not a compliment to be named after two men. Two men can't even copulate and have children. You have Leo Scipios Africanus, then you have Amer Amerigo Ves Vespucci calling you outside of your name when God named you Israel, prince of the power of God. That's what he named you, not no damn African-American. Guess what? That's an insult. That's anti-Semitic. Calling black people in America African-American or colored or nigger, whatever, that's anti-Semitic. That's true anti-Semitism because God called you the prince of God, that's Israel. That's what he named you. That's exactly what he named you. Um, get me Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. I want Proverbs chapter 6 and verse, you're going to read 16 to 19. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. These six things doth the Lord hate. Come on. Yea, seven are an abomination. So unto these him. seven things are an abomination. Come on. Unto him. Come on. A proud look. Uh -huh. A lying tongue. A proud look and a lying tongue. I want to focus on the word lying. Because we just read that word in Revelation 2 verse 9 and 3 verse 9, right? The word blasphemy means lies. Okay, go ahead. A proud look mm -hmm. and a lying tongue. Come on. And hands that shed innocent blood. And we're going to deal with the hands that shed innocent blood. Go ahead. And heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Mm -hmm. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. Mm -hmm. the, the wicked imagination is setting yourselves up over there in the land as the people of God and calling the so-called blacks in this land African Americans. Calling them niggas and not addressing them by their proper title. That is a wicked device. Different religions to keep us um, separated and destroyed as a people. That is a wicked um, a device. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, Go ahead. Come on. A false witness that speaketh lies. A false witness that speaketh lies. Notice God keeps reiterating the word lies. Lies. God hates that thing. He said these are lies. Go ahead. And he that soweth discord among brethren. And he that sows discord amongst brethren. Amongst brethren. Get me Proverbs 19 and 9. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19 and verse 9. Go ahead. A false witness mm -hmm. sh shall not be unpunished, mm -hmm. and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Get me that in Daniel, where it says to establish the vision. 
I believe that's Daniel 11, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I want, Yaakov? No, sir, not that one. Okay. I don't know that one. I'll find it. Oh, I've got it. 14. Yeah, okay. I've got it. The book of Daniel, chapter 11 and verse 14. Come on. And in those times, there shall, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Come on. Also, the robbers of thy people. The robbers of thy people. The robbers of thy people. Come on. Shall exalt themselves. Shall exalt themselves by calling themselves what? Israelites, Jews, when they are not. Come on. To establish the vision. Establish the vision. 1945. White Hebrew Amalekites uh, tried to establish the vision. The vision. All right. And, and um, also what they did recently with moving the um, the U.S. embassy, I believe, to Jerusalem instead of Tel Aviv, calling themselves Jews. They're trying to establish the vision. And guess who bared false witness to that? What nation bared fa false witness to that? America. You stand up, just say it loud. Say your name, too. Brother David. Brother America. David. America and Britain. Don't forget the Balfour Declaration That's right. and Britain and Britain. OK, they wanted to establish the vision. But what did God say? But they shall fall. But they shall fall. Now go back to what you just read in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse nine. Mm -hmm. A false witness it was America. That was Britain. They both had a hand in it. Not just Amalek. America and Britain got together and said, surely we shall put them in the land. OK, and they had the help of Rothschild. That's what the Belfort Declaration was about. OK, and oftentimes when we when we speak about that, them establishing the vision, we like to start with the Balfour Declaration. It was way before that. It was way before the Balfour Declaration. You had many um, so-called Zionists. Theodore Herzl and many people like him since the late 1800s that was pushing that propaganda, pushing that propaganda out there. It was always in the works to put Amalek in the land. So when you so-called blacks wake up and come up out of slavery and start learning how to read the Bible, now you're saying, oh, the people that I'm reading about, it's them. No, it's not them. They colonized the land the same way they colonized South Africa. The same way they colonized America. Esau has the same agenda wherever he goes. It's the same thing. It's the even the caves. Even the caves is not theirs. Y'all know who the caves was for, right? Who? What nation? When you read the, when you read Job, it's talking about uh, the Kaiser e Esau. Oh uh, no, the original cavemen, the original people in the caves that they took over, they pushed them out. Was the Horites? Oh, the Horites. Was the Horites, Mount Seir. You read about it, Mount Seir, and they became the cave dwellers because that was their original, that was supposed to be their original habitat. That's how they felt comfortable in the caves, eating lice off their hair and everything. Okay? They pushed the Horites out, and they, and they themselves dwelt in there. Somebody get me the Bible dictionary and look up Horites. Because remember, Esau was rich. Esau had what they called dukes. Remember that. They had dukes. They were dukes. All right. Look up Horites for me, Yakub. Read. Uh, where were you at? I'm still at Proverbs 19 and verse 9. Read Proverbs 19 and 9. Have somebody else look it up. Yes, sir. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. A false witness shall not be unpunished. So that's America and Britain and everybody who knows the truth. But still, because their hatred for the children of God, they still established Amalek in the land. Go ahead. And he that speaketh lies shall perish. You hear that? And he who speaketh lies shall perish. Anybody got whore rights for me? You got whore rights, David? H-O-R-I-T-E-S. Okay. Come on. All right. Thanks. What does it say next to it? Whore right. A people found in Mount Seir as early as the time of Abraham mm -hmm. and conquered by Shedor Leomor. And his allies, the yep. early inhabitants before Edomites dispossessed them and intermarried with them. Yes. Now, does it say cave dweller? Does it say anything about cave dweller? Okay. So when y'all do the research on your own, it's supposed to say, it will say Horites cave dweller. But right there, they told you that Esau came and pushed them out. Oh. And, uh, Horai. 
has uh, Cave Dweller right next Cave to Dweller. it. Cave Dweller. Yes, sir. Cave Dweller. Okay, those were the originals. Yes. Okay, but Esau found it fit that he belonged in the caves. So he pushed them out and he put himself in, in the caves. Okay, now let's get Genesis 36, 8 to 9. Come on. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 36 mm -hmm. and verse 8. Come on. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. So thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. And they pushed the all rights out. Go ahead. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. The nation of Edom is Esau. Who comes out of Esau? Amalek. 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 Go ahead. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Go ahead. Read. These are the names of Esau's sons. Mm -hmm. Eliphaz. The son of Ada, mm -hmm. the wife of Esau. If you want to know who some of these people are today, there's a class that I did called um, the Arabians or Esau, Negro, please. Watch that class. All right, go ahead. Come on. Reel, mm -hmm. the son of Basimeth, the Come. wife of Esau. Come on. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, mm -hmm. Omar, Zepho, and Gadam, and Kenaz. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. Go ahead. And she bare Eliphaz, Amalek. And she bare two Eliphaz, Amalek. Go ahead. And she bare two Eliphaz, Amalek. Uh-huh. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So Amalek is a part of Esau. Amalek is a part of Esau. Okay. Uh, jump down to verse 15, please. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. These were the dukes. Of the sons of Esau. The dukes means rich. They weren't poor. They were rich. Go ahead. The son of Eliphaz, mm -hmm. Duke Teman. Come D on. Duke Omar. Duke Zepho. Duke Kenaz. Mm -hmm. Duke Korah. Duke Gadam. And Duke Amalek. And Duke Amalek. And Duke Amalek. Get me, um, get me, did you read six, did I make you read six to seven? Uh, Jump no. back to six to seven. Yes, sir. Verse six. And Esau took his wives mm -hmm. and his sons and his daughters uh -huh. and all the persons of his house. Go ahead. And his cattle uh -huh. and all his beast and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan. Come on. And went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. So they went into the country in the face of his brother Jacob. So it said substance of the land. I wanted to focus on that to, sh to show you that Esau, the dukes of Esau, the children of Esau were not poor. They had money. They had wealth. They had cattle. They had substance. Okay. Um, jump down to, get me Genesis 20, uh, 27. We all know about Genesis 25. Yes, we all know about Genesis 25, about the blessing with Esau and Jacob. We all, we all understand that history, correct? To the new brothers? Y'all understand that. Okay. Now let's go to the blessing. Genesis, Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 38. 34. 34. 39. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 34. Mm -hmm. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter mm -hmm. cry and said unto his father, bless me, even me also, O my father. So Esau came crying to his dad. Go ahead, because he got supplanted. Go ahead. And he said, thy brother came with subtility and hath taken away thy blessing. Mm -hmm. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? Come on. For he hath supplanted me these two times. Go ahead. He took away my birthright. Mm -hmm. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And, taken and he said, hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? Go ahead. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Mm -hmm. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Go ahead. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Mm -hmm. Bless me, even me also, my father. Go ahead. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Go ahead. And his father answered and, and said. And Isaac his father. I'm sorry. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So you're going to dwell in the best places on earth. Guess what? 
Israel is one of the best places on earth. However, that land has a spiritual connection to it. It needs the proper people there in order for it to flourish. That's why a lot of the things there are imported. Okay? But it says Esau's descendants would possess the best places on earth, the fatness of the earth. But how? Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. Meaning they're going to be everywhere as the dew of heaven. Come on. And by the sword shalt thou live. How are they going to live? By the sword shalt thou live. How are they going to get the best places on earth? By the sword. Go ahead. And shalt serve thy brother. It says, and by the sword shalt thy live. It's the same thing when they tried to establish the vision. It was not by the sword. To this very day, you have uh, so-called Palestinians. We see what's happening to them in the land. Even before that, before the, the um, before they uh, put up the wall and all of that, you had uh, uh, African quarters there. We went. We seen it. They tore that down. Okay, they had an African quarters there and they had the Arab Palestinian quarters. Okay, all of that was by the sword. There's no peace over there in the land. Well, I'm telling you, wherever Esau go, it's the same thing. I don't care what kind of title they try to call themselves, how, how holy they try to make themselves look. No, all of that is malarkey. All of it. Go ahead. And by the sword shalt thou live. Come on. And shalt serve thy brother. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion mm -hmm. that thou shalt Break the, his yoke from off thy neck. And that happened in the book of 2 Kings chapter 8. Okay. Let's move on. Get me Exodus. Get me Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel. So this is when we were going into the land. God told us to go into the land of Canaan and possess it. And the nations were supposed to be our servants. All the resources, all the resources inside of the land of Canaan were supposed to be ours. OK, go ahead. Then came Amalek and mm -hmm. fought with Israel in Rephidim. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Amalek was trying to fight the children of Israel from going into the land. They were trying to fight them. And he teamed up with the Canaanites to do it. Go ahead. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him mm -hmm. and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Mm -hmm. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing that God says about the commandments. Keep my commandments and live. All right. When we keep God's commandments, the Most High is going to fight for us. The minute we stop keeping the commandments, he is not going to fight for us. He's going to let these other nations walk all over us. And that's something that they can't understand in the Christian church. That's something that the Black Lives Matter movement is struggling with. That's why they're letting LGBTQ up inside of that. And they're walking hand in hand with their oppressors talking about we shall overcome. If you want to overcome, keep the commandments. Because that right there with Moses, that's symbolic. To us keeping the commandments. Read it again. And it came Read it to, again. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand mm -hmm. that Israel prevailed. Come on. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Come on. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone. That's why there's another scripture that says to lift up thy banner. Get me that. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. How do you lift up a banner? You pick it up with your arms. The same thing Moses did. You pick up the Bible, you hold it up, you exalt it by keeping the commandments. Not just talking about it, but by keeping the commandments. It says, lift thee up the banner upon the high mountain. What is the high mountain? Huh? America is the high mountain. Okay, read it again. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto Exalt them. Exalt the voice unto them. And that's what we're going to continue to do. We don't give a damn what anybody says. Who they try to blackball. And we, we know they're going to try to demonize us. But it, it is what it is. Christ said if the, if the world hates you, know that it, hit, it hate me first. Did not they hate Christ? Yes, sir. It's the same thing. We're going to go through the same thing. Go ahead. Shake the hand. Shake the hand. 
Come on. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. But the point that I wanted was where it says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, meaning this Bible. Go back to our forefather Moses, please. The Exodus book, chapter 17, read verse 11 again. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 17 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Go ahead. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Go ahead. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, mm -hmm. and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Mm. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. Write and this for a memorial in a book. Where are you? What verse are you? You're in verse, verse 14, 14, right? Go yes, ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Mm -hmm. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Mm. He says, I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. That has not happened yet. That's why they're still able to run their mouth against the true children of God. So when is this going to take place? Get me Obadiah. You know what I want. When is this going to take place? He said, I'm going to wipe out the remembrance of Amalek from under the whole heaven. When is this going to take place? Read the book of Obadiah, chapter one and verse 18. Come on. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. The house of Jacob, that's Judah, Benjamin and Levi back together, putting their differences aside in the kingdom together. Go ahead. And the house of Joseph of flame. That's Ephraim on down. The house of Joseph coming right back to us. No more divisions. Go ahead. And the house of Esau. And the house, the house, meaning all of them, all people, all people, the same people he has indignation forever. It says the house of Esau, Amalek is included in that. Remember, Amalek was a duke of Esau. Go ahead. And the house of Esau. For stubble. And the house of Esau for a stubble. Okay, go ahead. And they shall kindle in them. And, and they shall kindle in them, read. And devour them. And devour them. Is that it? No, sir. Go ahead. And there shall not be any remaining of any, the house. No children, no woman, no nothing, no dogs, no cattle, nothing. Nothing. We are going to execute the original plan that was given to king um saul and it, it that's not just going to be a city it's going to be all of them you know how god said go out kill the animal kill the dog kill the cattle kill everything everything dead right that's true. during that time we ain't going to hold back like king saul did read that again and there shall not be any remaining of the house of esau mm. for the lord hath spoken for it. the lord not us not israel united in christ not anybody else who might follow us online. The Lord, the Bible, the Bible has put, and this is found in the Tanakh. This is found in the Hebrew Bible. This is found in the Tanakh. The book of Obadiah is the Tanakh. Okay, now let's go back to the Torah. Drop that. Go right back to the Torah, which you was reading. Exodus chapter 17. Read verse 14 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 17 and verse 14. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book mm -hmm. and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Mm -hmm. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Go ahead. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Mm -hmm. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war. The Lord will have war. That war never stopped. Some of you are asleep. Some of you don't know that you're at war. Let me show up. You know how Esau likes to say, well, black on black violence, black on black violence, black on black violence. Every nation, every nation harms themselves. That's why this, when this constitution was given to us, there was moral and civil laws to prevent that from happening. There's Chinese on Chinese violence. There's white on white violence. But when one nation kills another nation at a, a disproportionate amount, guess what? That's called war. 
That's called war. Okay, that is no longer just regular violence. That's called war. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Read that. Come on. And 14 again. Verse 16. Verse 16. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek. And we've been at war ever since we came off those cargo slave ships, brothers. You are still at war. That's why the Most High calls us what? Soldiers. Right? Any man that warreth. Get me that. Get me that. Second Timothy's. I believe that's Second Timothy's, right? Yes, sir. Second Two Timothy. and four. Yeah. Come on, let's get that. Yes, sir. The book of Second Timothy. Come on. Chapter 2 and verse 4. Read. No man that warreth. No man that warreth. What are you black men at? War. War for what? The redemption of Israel. The resurrection of Israel. Souls. We are at war for souls. The souls of our people. Read. Entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. And one of the affairs of this life is rioting. We don't do that. Marching alongside your oppressor. We don't do that. God says, any man that warreth does not entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. But what? That he may please him who hath chosen, chosen him to be a soldier. So God calls us a soldier. What does a soldier do? He goes to war for his nation. And that's what we're doing. And we understand that this is a spiritual war, not a carnal war. We're not fighting against people, flesh and blood. We're not putting nobody to death. We're not getting physical. It's a spiritual war in high places. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Go back now. Let's go back to the Torah. And let's see what the Torah says about Amalek again. Read verse 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 17 and verse 16. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek mm -hmm. from generation to to generation. So us casting down the lies of the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites today, guess what? That's part of war. That's spiritual warfare. That's because the time of them just running their mouth, lying and lying and blasphemy, that man, that has to go. And there's weak leaders out there that's going to vouch for them. Weak black people. Guess what? The Most High is going to run them right over to. The Most High is raising up new men on this earth that's going to go out and they ain't going to give a damn and they're going to speak the truth according to God's words. Okay, we ain't going to let nothing go over our heads. All right? That was uh, verse 16, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so God says he will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Get me Numbers 14. Numbers 14, you're going to read 39 to 45. The book of Numbers, chapter 14 and verse 39. To 45. Go ahead. And Moses told us these sayings unto all the children of Israel. And the people mourned greatly, mm -hmm. and they rose up early in the morning, and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, mm -hmm. for we have sinned. Come on. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go ahead. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you. You hear that? Re read verse 41 again. Read and verse 41, because it, it, it basically correlates to the same analogy that I gave you about when Moses lifted up his hand and put it down. It's basically saying the same thing. Go ahead. And Moses said, wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. When you transgress God's commandments, God is not going to fight for us, brothers. God will not fight for you if you are in clear transgression of his law. Read. Go not up. For the Lord is not among you, mm -hmm. that ye be not smitten before your enemies. Before your who? Enemies. Before your friends. Enemies. Some, of, some people want to convert, convert to their ideology of what's called Judaism, modern day Judaism. Please turn that off. Modern day Judaism. Okay, we just had a young lady in here with a prayer shawl. Okay, I remember, the, um, remember the, the brother that came in here a long time ago with the big Torah? And the prayer shawl, and then y'all had to put him out because he was arguing over the name and so forth. So a lot of people, you want to follow their religion, not knowing that right here, this Bible that you hold, this is for you. This is your constitution right here. God didn't give us religion. Okay, go ahead. Come on. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites. So the, the Amalekites were your enemies. Go ahead. Are there before you. It says for the Amalekites and the Canaanites. 
meaning they joined hands with the Canaanites to keep, a, to keep us out of the land, the land which they so inhabit today. To keep us out of the land, they joined hands. There was a partnership. We're going to get into that a little later. There was a partnership to keep us destroyed. Read. And ye shall fall by the sword. Go ahead. Because ye are turned away from the Lord. Uh -huh. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. Come on. But they presume to go up unto the, the hilltop. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Go ahead. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites, which dwelt in that hill, mm -hmm. and smote them and discomfited them even unto Hormah. Mm -hmm. And God allowed them to become victorious because we weren't keeping the commandments. The Most High God is not going to fight for us if we're not keeping the commandments. The sooner our people realize that, the sooner we'll be able to, to come up out of this captivity. Y'all understand? All right, get me Samuel, oh, 1 Samuel 15. We're going to jump around. Get me 1 Samuel chapter 15. We're going to read 1 through 3. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord hath sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Now he laid wait and how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. So that's what they were doing. They were laying wait for us to destroy us. Go ahead. Now go and smite Amalek mm -hmm. and utterly destroy all that they have. Go ahead. And spare them not. And spare them not. Come on. But slay both man and woman, uh -huh. infant and suckling. You hear the commandment? Slay both what? Man and woman. Go ahead. Infant and suckling. Mm -hmm. Ox and sheep. Come on. Camel and ass. You hear that? So that was the commandment that was given to Saul and he disobeyed it. That was that. And this was a total different generation. So when we read about war from gener generation to generation, this is part of what God is talking about. He gave the commandment to Saul to what to do to Agag. And he did not. OK, uh, what verse was that? That was verse three. That was verse three. Yes, sir. OK, so we know that he failed. We know that he saved Agag and Samuel had to come and finish the job off. All right. How many of you brothers read that history? Y'all read that history. Y'all familiar with that, right? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Let's get, um, let's go right to the New Testament. The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Mm -hmm. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, mm -hmm. and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. So what nation was, um, what nation, who are we talking about? What king was ruling and what nation was he? Officer Jediah. Explain what's going on here in Matthew's chapter 2. So the king was ruling was Herod and, well, Herod is an Edomite. He was an Edomite, an Idumean. Right. He was an Idumean what? What was he raised in? Or what was his religion, I should say? Well, he was raised in the manner of the Jews. Good. He was raised in the right. manner of the Jews, the Israelites. Okay? So he was a convert. He was a convert. When you get a chance, read up the history of John Hycranus. The way he, con he converted an Edomite city into, into the way of the Israelites. So what you would call Judaism, but not modern day Judaism. Y'all understand that? Yes, so Herod was raised in the custom of the Jews. Herod was an Idumean ruler of ancient Palestine from 47 BC to AD 79. Because there were Herod was just a title. There were many different Herods. Okay, from 47 BC to AD AD 79. Okay, the line started with Antipater. You can read about that in uh, Josephus and different works. Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procreator of Judea in 47 BC, meaning a ruler of Judea. Okay, read what you was holding, Yaqub, Matthew chapter 2. Yes, uh, verse 11 again. Go ahead. 
And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Go ahead. They departed into their own country another way. Uh -huh. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph mm -hmm. in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And flee, be flee deeper south into Africa, because we all know Israel is a part of Africa. Go ahead. And be thou there. Be thou there. Until I bring thee word. Until I bring thee word. Why? For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So this Amalekite man, this Idumean man, was seeking to destroy the young child, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Now, that is the first Holocaust, because I know we always say the transatlantic slave trade. We tend to neglect the sub-Saharan slave trade, which was a Holocaust. We had many Holocausts. That was a tragedy, because he went out throughout the land of Judea. And what happened? He was slaughtering the children two years and under, killing all the male children. Why? Because he knew about the prophecy of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Now, is that documented? Absolutely. Uh, minimize this. Get me holy innocence, please. Get me holy innocence. You have our, I'm going to choose some nice words. You, you have our ignorant and willfully ignorant people that still follow Christianity, especially the demonic religion of Roman Catholic. No, you got to Google it. You got to go to go to Google and look and type it up. They follow that unknowing that th they don't even realize that there's a holiday. There is a day that they follow in Christianity that commemorates our death. Many of you never knew that. Many of you never knew that. Let's read it. So it's Monday, December 28th. Get me, uh, you can't get anything on Wikipedia. Here we go, Massacre of the Innocents. Massacre of the Innocents, also known as Holy Innocents. So who was the Innocents? The Israelites. The same way you have brothers on the street getting sh shot down for no reason, getting beat up by the cops, right? Killed by the cops, knee on the neck, and so forth, Okay. And the same way, guess what? They're going to persecute the Israelites, the people bringing out this word. Why? Because they hate God's words. They, anything that has to do with the resurrection of the Israelites, they hate. And that's all Edomite nations, not just America. It's talking about Amalek as well. Everybody or every single last one of them. Okay, read that. Let me well. Massacre of the Innocents. In the New Testament, the massacre of the innocents is the incident in the nativity narrative of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 16 through 18, mm -hmm. in which Herod the Great, king of Judea, orders the execution of all male children two years old and under in the vicinity of Bethlehem. Mm, so they had a holiday for this thing that probably unbeknownst to y'all, unbeknownst to many of you, especially if you was raising Catholicism, some of y'all was probably doing this thing. And probably never even knew what the hell you were doing or what your mom was doing or what the priest was talking about. He was talking about your Holocaust, you, you black people. They was talking about you and you Hispanics as well, too. All right. I'm going to get on y'all in a minute. You so-called Hispanics. Look at Brian's eyes. He's like, oh, no, no, senor, not me. Go ahead. Come on. A majority of Herod bi biographers and probably a majority of biblical scholars hold the event to be myth, legend or folklore. Mm -hmm. The Catholic, the Catholic Church has claimed the children. You see, you see how you see how Esau is the devil. They're saying it's written in the Bible, but they say it was a myth. Biblical. How can you be? A, how can you be a Bible scholar, but you deny what's written in Matthew two thirteen? Read. The Catholic Church has claimed the children murdered in Jesus' stead as the first Christian martyrs mm -hmm. and their feast, Holy Innocence Day. Uh -huh. Or the Feast of the Holy Innocents. Or the Feast of the Holy Innocent. Now press the back button. Click back. Click the back button. Go up. Go up. Uh, hmm. There was something. What do we celebrate? Click on um, what do we celebrate? 
You got to click on the arrow. Read that. What do we celebrate on December 28th? Feast of the Holy Innocents, also called uh, Childermas or Innocence Day. Festival celebrated in the Christian churches in the West on December 28th and in the Eastern churches on December 29th and commemorating the massacre of the children by King Herod in his attempt to kill the infant Jesus. Mm, so that was Amalek who did this. Amalek who did this. I'm going to repeat it again. Amalek who did this. Okay? And they still celebrate it today in these churches. Okay? They commemorate it. Now, mm, type in... Who celebrates who celebrates Holy Innocence Day? Because it was something that came up. So it's called Dia, Dia de los Inocentes. My Spanish is horrible. I need Kasha to repeat this thing for me. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, go ahead. What is it? Who, who celebrates Dia de los Inocentes? What is it? In Spain and indeed across many primarily Roman Catholic countries, mm -hmm. the 28th day of December is a day of pranks and practical jokes. However, where April Fool's is a relatively low-key event with somewhat murky origins, Dia de los Santos Innocentes is a national celebration rooted mm -hmm. in specific religious history. So when you, and mainly you got uh, the Northern Kingdom tribes that celebrate this thing. So when you might say, well, that's just Judah. That was just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Mmm, not necessarily. Get me Matthews. Get me Matthews. As if you guys weren't in the land. Simple as hell. Celebrating the um the destruction of your brothers. Where is it in Matthews about the Galilee of the Gentiles? Yeah, 413. 413. Yes. Come on. The book of Matthews, chapter 4 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast and the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, uh -huh. that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So you had remnants, I'm going to repeat that again, small remnants of the northern kingdom in the land of Judea. So you was there too, celebrating your own death, your own kinsman death by the hand of Amalek. This is one of the first holocausts. Okay, close that out. Close that out. All right, so that was Herod the Great. All right, get me Matthew, chapter 14, 1 through 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 14 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. At the time, at that time, Herod the Tetrarch mm -hmm. heard of the fame of Jesus. So you now, now you had Herod the Tetrarch. That's when Christ came back. That's when Christ left Egypt and came back to Israel after the first Herod the Great passed away. Y'all understand that? Remember, they had the same titles, Herod. Herod the Great passed, and you had Herod the Tetrarch. Okay, go ahead. And said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Go ahead. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him mm -hmm. and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, mm -hmm. his brother Philip's wife. Go ahead. For John said unto him, it is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. So why would he put him to death if they were raised in the custom of the Jews? Why was he not keeping that law found in Leviticus 18? Why? Because they're blasphemous liars. Amalek are blasphemous liars. Okay, go ahead. But when Herod's birthday was kept, go ahead. The daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, mm -hmm. whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Go ahead. And she, being bore and being before instructed of her mother, said, "Give me here John the John Baptist's head and a charger." Go ahead. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. Go ahead. And he sent and beheaded John in, pr in the prison. Mm -hmm. And his head was brought in a charger. Go ahead. And given to the damsel. Go ahead. And she brought it to her mother. And she brought it to her mother. Go ahead. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. So Amalek beheaded John the Baptist, not for anything physical but because he was telling the truth. The same way we come and tell the truth now 
And then you'll see they try to demon, demonize, demonize us with their propaganda, with their secret plots. They don't want to be exposed. Ooh, the big bad Israelites. And we're not doing any, anything physical. We're not hanging anybody off of trees. We're not castrating anybody. We're not blackballing anybody. We're not redlining anybody. The things that they do to us. All, we, all we're doing is reading the Bible. But just like their forefather, Herod the Tetrarch, they hate the Bible. That's right. Okay, that's why he put John the Baptist to death. Because all he did was tell him a law. A law that he knew. Because he was raised. They were all raised in the custom of the Jews. Okay? Get me... Uh, okay, we did Matthews. Get me Deuteronomy 28. Verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 and verse 48. We all should be familiar with the book of Deuteronomy. Okay? That is Bible 101, Israelite 101. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, only pertains to us. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger, and in thirst, mm -hmm. and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And in want of all things, meaning everything under the sun. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. When we, when we read that, we always think about, who's the first person that we think about? Huh? No, I'm talking about the people that put the yokes of iron on your necks. Esau. Esau, but what Esau? Normally, we always think about American Esau. Some might say, well, um, British, Portuguese, Spanish, French. But why do we always leave out Amalek? That shows you the propaganda already seeped into the deep recesses of your mind. It's already in your mind. You're thinking this man is holy. Some of you really think that they're the Jews. Some of you really think these white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites are the Jews. That's why you never make mention of them. When you read Deuteronomy 28, when you break it down in the street, you don't make mention of them. You don't think that they had a hand in your slavery? Are they all not part of the same red dragon? Are sure. they not Edomites? You don't think they had a hand in your destruction? That shows you the, the, the depths of white supremacy. It's in your mind. Well, you'll leave out a group of people. I need Yehudi. No, no, <laughs> no, no, I need Yehudi. Nothing. Atalo goyim. You're a goy. That's what you are. That's You're right. a heathen. You ain't, not, you ain't a Jew. Okay? I'm looking at the Jews of God. But you have to know your history. They always say, don't forget. Right? How come you forget? Why are you the only nation on earth that they want you to forget? Why is that? You ever thought about that? Why are you the only nation on earth they want you to forget? The Chinese never forgets. They remember um, the, the, the Boxers Rebellion or whatever the hell that was. What is that? China or Japan? One of them. Right? America always brings up 9-11. Every 9-11, they remember 9-11. The, 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 um, the white Israeli, the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites always talk about the Holocaust. Ooh. But you, the minute you talk about slavery, transatlantic, sub-Saharan, anything, even the history we bring out of us being Israelites, oh, forget that. That's the past. Maybe because when you start talking about it and start making supplication, you're going to start bethinking yourself. You're going to remember who you are. And once you do that, maybe you're going to start keeping the commandments. And then once that happened, maybe, well, not maybe, it will it will. Let me rephrase that. It will bring in the second coming of Jesus Christ. They don't want that to happen. That's right. They don't want that to happen. They don't want that to happen. Okay. Um, so Deuteronomy 28, verse 48 again, please. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, mm -hmm. and in want of all things. In the want of all things. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck mm -hmm. until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed 
D. Now, before we show these pictures, I want to show this video, please. Everything that I'm about to show you is from Amalekite, white Hebrew Israeli Amalekite um, archaeologists, authors, and historians. They're not by any black people at all. So you know how the Bible says I'm going to let their tongue fall upon themselves? That's, what, that's exactly what God is doing. So if anybody has a problem with what I'm about to bring out, then they should really consult their own because it's their own who revealed it. So before you call us anti-Semitic or Semitic, which we cannot be anti-Semitic, but let's say you want to call us anti-Semitic, you would have to call your own. The same Amalekites who revealed it, you got to call them anti-Semitic for speaking the truth. Okay, play the video. This is going to be our disclosure. Yours Go ahead. is a voice of criticism we don't often hear in the United States. Um, this is Amalek, often two Amalekites. Often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. Stop. Some of y'all seen this already. She said it's a trick. We. She didn't say they. We, including herself. It's a trick. We always use it. Use what? The word anti-Semitism. So we're discussing this, but if Amalek has a problem, they should contact her. I think she passed away. I'm not sure. They should contact her relatives. They should call their own. So, there's, so that means there's turmoil within themselves. For one group of people to use it, but another is saying, no, nah, it's a trick. We always use that. Play it. Response to that as an Israeli Jew. Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti Semitic. Mm. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. And the the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong, and they are strong in this country, mm, as okay. you know. All right, you could close that out. You can close that out. Now, get me Mamamides, Wikipedia. Mamamides, not the medical center. I want the man. I want the man that came up with the origin. Do you ever heard of the, um, the curse of Ham? This was the man that started it. Started it. Mamamides. Jonathan, I sent it to you. Right there, right there, there we go. Okay, go ahead. Mamamides. Moses ben Mammon, commonly known as Mamamides, and also referred to by the acronym Rambam, was a medieval Sephardic Jewish philosopher who became one of the most prolific and influential Torah scholars of the Middle Ages. Go down. So he could read it. Go ahead. In his time, he was also a preeminent astronomer and physician. Born in Cordoba, Almoravid Empire, present-day Spain, on Passover Eve, 1138, he worked as a rabbi, physician, and philosopher in Morocco and Egypt. Stop right there. So when you read his book, The Guide for the Perplexed, it says how ham, how black people are a curse of ham. Okay, it talked about the lips, the kinky hair, and the, the, uh, the genitalia being enlarged because theirs are not enlarged. Okay, so this is the man that started that, that put it out there. And what happened is the, uh, the other Edomite Gentiles, the other Edomite Gentile nations, they, they took that, they hearkened on that, they made it an ideology, and they also made it as a reason to what? Prolong and further our slavery and mistreatment in captivity. Y'all understand? It was Amalek who started it. Amalek. All right, now get me the hospital. Close that out. Because I know there's a campaign going around with Confederate statues being torn down. Y'all seen that? There's Confederate statues coming down everywhere. But the same way they taking down those statues, what happened to this? They named a hospital after this demon. Right there in Borough Park, Brooklyn. Look at that. Mamamides Medical Center. Show the building. This is a hospital. 
If they're not going to take the hospital down, change the name. The same way they got rid of, uh, how do they call them? Um, uh, Marion Sims. Remember Marion Sims? Y'all know who that is, right? Okay, y'all write the name down, do the research. Okay, uh, Marion Sims. They took down a statue of him. So what happened to this? Here you have a hospital named after a demon. Mamamides, Amalek. Okay, take that down. Um, read Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt again, Egypt again, bondage again, slavery again. Go ahead. With ships. And he gets detailed. He says, with ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And there. And there. And there where the ships docked. Come on. Ye shall be sold. Ye shall be sold. Come on. Unto your enemies. Go ahead. For bond men uh -huh. and bond women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall redeem you as many has tried. Now who was doing the selling and who was doing the buying? Read that. Let me well. A likely young Negro wench, about 18 years of age, speaks good English fit for town or country benefits mm -hmm. to be fold, to be sold. sold by Nathan and Isaac mm -hmm. Levi in Nathan and Isaac Levi or Levi however they pronounce it Nathan and Isaac Levi y'all see what I'm reading mm -hmm. to be sold by Nathan and Isaac Levi in Front Street Philadelphia for many of you think that there was no slaves up there in the north, the so-called abolitionist state. Yeah, right. Abolition, my rear end. Okay? We was held up there, too, as slaves. Okay? Sometimes on the low, sometimes in the open. But look, this was done in the open right here. Sold by Amalek, Nathan and Isaac Levi. Okay? Get the next one. Come on. Go ahead. For sale, a likely young Negro girl, about 18 years old. Has, about eight years old. I'm sorry. About eight years old, has 20 years to serve. serve. Inquire of Isaac Franks. Inquire of Isaac Franks. It sounds like some great economics was being built back then. So Amalek likes to throw the rock and then hide, hide behind a pillar. That's what they like to do. Throw the rock and hide behind the pillar. Team up with the other nations to oppress us. The same way Amalek teamed up with Canaan. It's the same thing. Okay? Get me the next one. Read. 40. And these are books that I possess. And I have all the bibliographies. These are all facts. It's not a fairy tale. Go ahead. 40 shillings reward. Ran away from the subscriber last night. An indentured Negro girl named Belle, about 16 years of age, about five feet high. The formerly was the property of Mr. Daniel Dupay of this city. Her mother is the property of Mr. William Cooks. Cons. C-O-N-T-S. Okay, Cons. And now lives in his family. Come on. Whoever will bring said Negro Belle to the subscriber or lodge her in any jail so that so that uh, he may be had again again shall receive the, the above, above reward. reward with reasonable charges Isaac Franks once again okay all, all perform all you don't got to read that part. okay okay next one is there more oh look who else go ahead valuable negroes by a Tobias. Oh, Tobias. Tobit in the Bible with Tobias. Always taking the names. We got mm -hmm. heathen. Some of us walking around with heathen names. They walking around with our names. Go ahead. On Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we'll be sold north of the custom house. Come on. John, a likely young Negro fellow, about 24 years of age, a good house servant and accustomed to horses. Read. Tom, a prime fellow, about 34 years old. Come on. Uh, boat, hand, and fireman. Go ahead. The above Negroes have worked in the field 
occasionally are warranted sound. Go ahead. Conditions and approved endorsed note at four months. Is there more on the auctions? Okay. All right. Read Deuteronomy 28 and 68 again. Now you're getting a clear vision. We the must include all nations on this. All Edomites. Don't leave them out. Who here? British, Caucasians, French, Caucasians, Spat. What happened to Amalek? That white supremacy already crept up in your mind. Cesar Borgia already crept up in your mind. You're separating them from the other Edomites. Why? Why? They had a hand in our slavery. We got to bring this thing out. And it's not hatred. It's not anti-Semitic. It's truth. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies mm -hmm. for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. Mm. Okay, get me, I want, um, get me uh, where it says, hopefully this is in order. Get me Amalek slave legacy. It's another word used, but I want to keep using the word because I know how the algorithm work. They'll try to block stuff. Go back, go back. You had it. Let's read that. Jews and the African slave trade. Throughout the history of the practice, Jews have been involved in No, the just read the highlighted. Oh, highlight. I'm sorry. In his book, A History of the Jews, Solomon Grazel states that Jews were among the most important slave dealers. And I have that. I have his book as well, A History of the Jews by Solomon Grazel. Go ahead. In European society, mm -hmm. Henry L. Fingold, Feingold. No, no, read Lady Magnus. I'm sorry. Go ahead. La okay. Ma the, uh, Lady Magnus writes that in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. the principal purchases of slaves were found among the Jews. Go ahead. And these are Amalekite people saying this. They're telling on themselves. These are not black people. These are not Chinese people. These are not Japanese people, East Indian people, Arab people. No, these are Amalekites telling on themselves. Go ahead. They seem to be always and everywhere at hand to buy and to have the means equally ready to pay. Mm, go ahead. Henry L. Feingold stated that Jews who were frequently found at the heart of commerce could not have failed to contribute a proportionate share to the slave trade directly or indirectly. Good. Get me the next one that's supposed to be attached to that. Um... Uh, yeah, get me that. I'll read that. Go ahead. The Jews' participation in the slave trade, particularly their trafficking in non-Jewish slaves. Trafficking, trafficking, trafficking. We, we read that word. We read that all the time. Trafficking in non-Jewish slaves. Go ahead. Incited the moral indignation of Europe's Gentile population. What does it mean by incited? Incited the moral indignation of Europe's Gentile population. Funded it. They they assisted. They started it and they assist, They participated. They were screaming, hooray, hooray. Let's read that. Psalms 137. No new thing under the sun. 137. Come on. The book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. Chapter 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom and the day of Jerusalem mm -hmm. who said, race it, race it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Go ahead. Even to the foundation thereof. Same thing Amalek did with, with the Canaanites. It's the same thing Esau did this, the same thing with Babylon. The other tribes of Esau. Okay, they said destroy it, destroy it. It's the same thing we're reading here. Read that highlighted part again. The Jews' participation in the slave trade, particularly their trafficking mm -hmm. in non-Jewish slaves, uh -huh. incited the moral indignation of Europe's Gentile population. So guess what? That persuaded the other Edomite nations to go ahead and do the same thing. Because surely if these are the people of God and they're participating in slavery, surely I can do the same. It's the same thing we read in the Bible. That's how we know this Bible is no joke. This Bible is a real book. All right, close that out. Give me the next one. The Jews. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, you can blow it up. Don't be scared. The Jews in slavery in colonial South America and the Caribbean. The Jewish Caribbean presence began in earnest with Columbus. Start, read, read what's in um, italics. Blow it up, please. 
You want me to read that part? With just the italics. I can't okay. see it. It says, with the spread of sugar, cotton, and coca, and other plantations, the slave ships began to plow, to plow those waters. Nor can it be said that Jewish traders were absent from the hideous traffic. Go ahead. The Jewish Caribbean presence began in earnest with Columbus' initial foray into the region. With these early Jewish colonists, the, the economic motivation for the exploitation of millions of black Africans was introduced to the Western Hemisphere. The strategy seemed simple enough. Wealth would be amassed through a plantation economy driven by sugarcane. Mm -hmm. The two companion enterprises of trading sugar and slaves were common occupations of Jews in the Middle Ages. Go ahead. The early European explorers had ascertained that the climate, both temp uh, temperately and financially, made the Caribbean a logical enterprise zone. And in this transfer of the sugar industry into the Eastern Caribbean, the history of the in industry became entwined with the Western migration of the Jews. Go ahead. They were primarily the financiers and merchants, and in a few cases, they were also the plantation masters. So it says they were primarily the financiers and merchants, and merchants, and in a few cases, they were also the plantation masters. Please get me Hosea chapter 12, verse 7. Stay right where you at. Get me Hosea. 12 and 7. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 7. Go ahead. He is a merchant. Come on. The balances of deceit are in his hands. So it says he is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in their hands. Why? Because they trafficked slaves. They trafficked slaves, built their wealth off the, the backs and blood of slaves, the true Israelites, so-called black people. Go ahead. He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. He loveth to oppress. They oppressed us back then, and they're still doing it now, although it might seem subtle to some of you. Okay? Go ahead. Come on, let me roll. The early European explore. Uh, they, they, were were prim prim they were primarily the financiers and merchants, and in a few cases, they were also the plantation masters. Go ahead. Jews from Portugal, Holland, England, and all over Europe advantaged themselves through the domination of the commerce of these island regions, particularly in sugar. Get the next page. I believe that was... Go ahead. Jewish slave legacy. Go ahead. The legacy of this Jewish dominance over colonial Brazil is manifested centuries later in the language and folklore of its citizenry. There are even Bush Negroes, says Jacob Beller, with Jewish names who use Hebrew words in their language. Why? Because they had Jewish plantation masters, slave owners. Go ahead. No doubt descendants of the slaves who worked on the Jewish-owned sugar plantations, Beller observed the lingering remnant of Jewish oppression. Go ahead. The time-honored anti-Semitic stereotypes were used, accusing Jews of being communists, capitalists, profiteers, bloodsuckers, etc. Mm -hmm. I was told that even the Creoles, the great-grandchildren of the slaves, now accuse the Jews of having enslaved and robbed their ancestors who were the true owners of the land. And it's all documented. It's all documented. They have it all documented. That's why they're able to accuse them of such actions. Go ahead. The, res the residual effect of the Jewish presence in Brazil has been, uh, has been codified in the language. The Dictionario de, Dictionario la, de la Española. Academia Española, for mm -hmm. example, includes the following. Mm -hmm. Judeo. Judeo. Mm -hmm. Judeada. Mm -hmm. Hebreo. Uh -huh. Sinigago. Sinigago. Go Sinigago. And Cohen. Okay, all of that is in their Portuguese language, all right? If you could speak Spanish, you could understand Portuguese. Just ask Officer Kasha, he'll tell you. Okay, get me the next one. Nope. We don't if if we already went through that, so y'all can X those out so you don't get confused. Uh Suriname. Suriname. And we we have a congregation in Suriname. So I'm pretty sure they would love this information. And they can also verify it when they go to their libraries and congresses out there. There's records on this. Go ahead. The Jews arrived in Suriname with their many slaves between 1639 and 1654. Mm -hmm. Joseph Nunez 
Dave Fonseca, also known as David Nasi, led the last influx, established a synagogue, and built a whole colony based on slave labor. Read. He crafted a little Jewish homeland on a large island in the Suriname River that became known as the Savannah of the Jews. Because it's, in, it's, a, it's a resemblance of South Charleston, Carolina, Savannah, and Savannah, Georgia, where there was a lot of Amalek. Go ahead. Soon they owned vast sugar, coffee, cotton, and lumber plantations and used many thousands of African slaves. Go ahead. For the Indians were not able to adapt to compulsory labor. So those Indians is making reference to Northern Kingdom, not Elam, Northern Kingdom. Go ahead. And died away rapidly. Come on. By May of 1667, an inventory of an area of the country known as Thorerica showed the Jewish holdings to be considerable. Okay, next. Wait, wait, go back to something that you missed. Go back to that. Read that right there in parentheses. Thorerica consisted of nine plant plantations for raising sugar cane with 233 slaves. Imagine the wealth you can build on 233 free laborers. So that image... That image that Ice Cube showed that everybody is talking about, going crazy about, with the Monopoly table on the backs of black people, that is factual. We have the proof. Even your own people said it. Even Amalek themselves are revealing themselves. Okay? So to hell with that anti-Semitic garbage. That is lies. All right? Read. 55 sugar kettles, uh -huh. 106 head of cattle, and 28 men. Next page. Read. Plus an additional six plantations with 181 slaves, 39 sugar kettles, and 66 animals. Mm -hmm. All these plantations were owned by 18 Portuguese Jews. Keep reading. Africans were brought in in large concentrations mm -hmm. and warehoused by Jews as the slave trade became a major feature of Jewish economic life. Come on. The fear of the slave masses was a phrase that frequently appeared in the official documents. At no time did the number of whites exceed 7% of the number of slaves. Mm. By the end of the 18th century, in the plantation region outside the city, there was one white for every 65 blacks. And they couldn't do nothing. Why? Because God put the, the most high God put the fear in us. Why? Because it was time for us to serve our captivity. Go ahead. Despite the repeated instructions from the authorities that there should be at least one overseer for every 25 slaves, mm -hmm. the Jews at times made up half of the white population. So Amalek at that time made up half of the population. Go ahead. Many special privileges were granted to the Jewish colonists, especially when the English were in control. Go ahead. When the Dutch took over in 1667 and promised the Jews free exercise of their religion, uh -huh. Jews went so far as to demand that their slaves be permitted to work on Sunday, the Christian Sabbath. So when you had Edomite, Edomite white Christians here in this land that was given um, the, 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 the former slaves, the Israelites, off on Sunday, but Amalek, he was like, no, hell no. I ain't getting off on Sunday. You can carry your butt right back in those fields and work. Okay? Bring that. Go to the other one. Remember, whatever we're not using, you could cross out. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, go ahead. The names. See, these are para, para, mar, para Maribo. We went there. All right? We went, we, over, we went there for camp. Okay? Um, read that. The wealth. The wealth of the Jews is demonstrated in... E-A-J-A, mm -hmm. page 155, in which Bloom says that 10 Jews departed for Jamaica in 1675 with 332 sla Damn. Excuse me, 322 slaves. Mm. See ahead. also M-C-A-J-1, page 159. Okay, uh, that's it. Go down the below list. Of, wait, 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 wait. Can I read the names? Lord have mercy. Go back to what you get. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it says the below listed. Read that. Minimize that a bit. Some words are cut off. Could you min just minimize it just a little? Right there. The below, the below, the, the below, read it. The, the below, below listed. listed made in quantities of sugar ranging from 25 to 1400 pounds. The below listed Jewish donors, therefore, may be considered plantation owners or brokers mm -hmm. who were the prime exploiters of black African labor. Mm. 
The names marked with an asterisk are mentioned on other lists and in documents relating to slaveholding Jews. Exploitation of black excellence. That's what we're basically reading in a nutshell. All right, and you have all the names there. Daniel Messiah, Joseph Coronel, Jacob Rodriguez de, de Prado Jr., Abraham Nunes Henriquez, Abraham Peri, Pereira, whatever, Abraham de, de Pina, Abraham Crespo, and you jump over David Juden and, and Ishak. Ishak is supposed to be Isaac. Isaac, Israel, Ardenes, and all the names are there, documented unto this very day. Okay, close that out. Give me the next one. Read. All, just, the, just I like. Um, read uh, read that at the top. All more. Okay. All more than one third of the white population of the colony, of the colony, when authorities considered legislation requiring that slaves be idle on the Christian Sabbath, the Jews protested, calling such an ordinance a crippling disability. The black African was so critical to the development of the Jewish community that the economic decline of the community was largely connected with the abolition of the slave trade in 1819 and the emancipation of the slaves in 1863. Go ahead. Jewish plantations. In May of 1668, an inventory of 15 plantations owned by 18 Portuguese Jews counted 414 black Africans being held as slaves. Mm. In Richard Gofile's uh -huh. article, Contributions to the History of the Jews in Suriname, he lists those plantations, which evidently belong to Jews, showing how the Jews, even here, naturally clustered together. Obviously, many thousands of black African slaves were required to make these plantations productive. Go down, go down, and you see the names right there. Okay. Plantations on Suriname River with, with acres. acres. Look at the acres. Y'all talking wow. about three. Hey, I seen, we was driving somewhere yesterday, and I seen land or houses on three, four acres. I was losing my mind. Snapping pictures, calling up the realtors. I want that. But look at Amalek. Look at Amalek, widow of J.O. Konasi, Portobello. 800 acres and Negroes, the body of black slaves to operate on those on those acres. S.A. Misa, a thousand acres. Ishak, Isaac, the David Misa, a thousand acres. Solomon Misa, a thousand acres. Y'all see this? Stolen land. Jump over, look at this, B.H. Grenada, 1558, 1,558 acres of land. Imagine working that thing from sun up to sundown, picking cotton, picking whatever you had to pick. Unbelievable. Okay, next one. Yes, sir. All right, you could, you could. Um, these are the different plantations. Bring that out. You could cross. You could take that down. You could take that down. Give me some more. Uh, read this right here. Read it quick. According to Jewish author. Herbert I. Bloom, the slave trade was one of the most important Jewish activities here as elsewhere in the colonies. The following is a list of Jewish buyers of black slaves from the Dutch West Indi India Company in Suriname, February 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 1707. Look right here. Look at all the names and look at the people that they had. All right, the males, the males that they had, they owned six males, three females. These are the amount of slaves that some of them had. Okay, and the names are right there. The names are right there, documented. Okay, cross that out. Exit out of that. Go ahead, read. The Jews were naturally heavy buyers in the African slave markets, and in 1755, even the synagogue invested in a house and 14 slaves, mm -hmm. purchased from another Jew, A. Pereira. Mm -hmm. Other registered investments of the synagogue include a plantation called now. Nahamu. 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 Mm -hmm. Comfort ye. Just like Nahama. Go ahead. With its 112 slaves. Isahak, Isahak, De Joseph, Kohen, Nasi, of a most prominent Jewish family, purchased Topenberg Tulip Castle with its 72 Africans, 
many of whom died in 1772, forcing him into, into financial crisis. Read. Thousands of enslaved Africans labored for the Jewish plantation masters in the cruelest, most inhuman conditions. Mm -hmm. The list below is composed of names that appeared on maps of settlements in Suriname circa 1750 to 1780. Cross that out, exit out of that. The Jews murder the blacks of Suriname. Okay, so this is the, um, the basically the dominance and the persecution that Amalek was doing over there in Suriname. Suriname, we know, is comprised of Asher and a little bit of Benjamin. So you have Asher and the tribe of Benjamin out there. Go ahead. From time to time, the Negro slaves revolted and escaped to the jungles once they descended on their masters. For nearly a century, the Savannah suffered from these depredations. And to fight them off, the Jewish planters had only themselves to depend on. Go ahead. Between 1690 and 1772, the black man of Suriname rebelled against the Jewish slave makers. The Maroons, or runaway former slaves, formed several communities in the inaccessible parts of the woods mm -hmm. and were the most implacable and cruel enemies of the colonists. Some 6,000 ex-slaves had escaped into the interior of the colony by the early 18th century and proved too stubborn for the Dutch to overcome. Go ahead. Three major groups of Maroons became established in the interior regions. So you had three major groups of the Maroons. Go ahead. And became known as the Dukas, mm -hmm. Saramakans, mm -hmm. and Maturis. The Dukas, ju uh, uh, in this day and time, they, cl they hold claim to Judah. All right, the Empire of Judah. Go ahead. Jacob R. Marcus reported the conditions of the time. Go ahead, read that. The whites felt they were being persecuted by their own slaves. So the whites felt, man, I'm telling you the caucasity of right. this man. The whites felt they were being persecuted by their own slaves because they, look they looked at them as possessions. How the hell is our own possession rebelling against us? That's the mind state that these people had. Go ahead. The result was a vicious circle of white insecurity, mm -hmm. inducing negro, negrophobic, negrophobic repression and inhuman cruelty. Go ahead. To which the blacks reacted by murdering their white oppressors and escaping into the jungle. Go ahead. It was common for fugitive slaves to join the bush negroes who had been taking refuge in the wilderness ever since the days of the English occupation during the 1650s. So ever since the 1650s, you had negroes in the wilderness hiding. Go ahead. From their jungle villages and fortresses, the embittered blacks sallied forth to wage a relentless war against their former masters. Come on. Plantation life thus had its full complement of perils, and the Jewish planters led by their own militia captains not only go on to the next page not only defended themselves against Negro raids, but also made frequent frequent uh, re retaliatory incursions into the jungle. Come on. Captain David C. Nassi engaged in more than 30 expeditions as a frontier ranger against the well-organized and desperate Negroes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the Indians whose language Nassi spoke were employed as scouts. Wow, so they used, they used uh, Asher. They used Asher to find us. Come on. During the course of a Maroon incursion in 1690, a wealthy Jewish plantation. Let me read. Let me take over. A wealthy Jewish plantation owner named M. Mikado was put to death by the freedom fighters. And as the threat of full scale insurrection grew, the Jews organized a militia to attack the black settlements and recapture the marooding band of Negroes. The Jews participated in the suppression of the revolts, and from 1690 to 1722, they took the lead. As a matter of fact, writes Cecile Roth, Cecile Roth was in, um, an Amalekite historian, so this was one of their own. As a matter of fact, writes Cecile Roth, the revolts were largely directed against them, as being the greatest slaveholders of the region. So who was the greatest slaveholders of the region? Amalek. This is in Suriname, South America. And trust me, they were not only in South America. All right. Some of the Jewish leaders were, here's the names, David Nassi, Captain Forgood, Captain Jacob de Avilaire, Manuel Pereira, Isaac, Ar Isaac Ar 
Arias, Abraham DeBrito, Captain Isaac Carvalho, Moses Nar, Gabriel De La Fate, Isaac Nassi, uh, J.G. Witchers, Sir Chas Green, and Abraham DeVere. Um, go down a bit. Go down, go down, okay. In 1730, a, a desperate effort was made to punish the black guerrillas by a detail of the Jewish militia, including 14 volunteers and 36 of their slaves. They devastated the African settlements, but their actions did not by any means intimidate the lawless hordes who were intent upon rebellion and plunder. On the contrary, it only roused their anger all the more. David Nassi, nephew of the biggest slave dealer in Suriname, joined with Captain Boy of the 500-man Jewish citizens militia and offered freedom to their slaves if they participated in an attack on the blacks. Their sole function to murder all blacks that they could not re-enslave. The Africans led by brother Cordon had engineered a series of attacks on the Jewish plantations which angered the Jews. The greatest of the leaders of the black rebels was named Baron. He had formerly been the slave of a Swede, Swede is a Swedish person, who had promised to free him. The master then broke his word and sold him to a Jew. Baron obstinately refused to work, in consequence of which he was publicly flogged under the gallows. This usage the Negro so violently resented that from the moment he vowed revenge against all Europeans without exception. Get me on the um, Wikipedia article I sent you on Drapetamia. Drapetamia, how many, how many of you heard of Drapetamia from Samuel Cartwright? It's actually a pseudoscience terminology, but this is what Esau was uh, bringing up back then. This was their uh, psychiatric, so-called psychiatric evaluation of the Negro. Like, if you would have a slave and a slave would rebel or go against them, they thought it was a mental Ill illness because they thought that the, the Negro was born to be a servant. Get me that in Jeremiah. Get me that in Jeremiah real quick. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2. And verse 14, is, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Why? Because all throughout the Bible, where were we? In captivity, mostly, right? Outside of the little kingdoms that we had, the little short time of rulership, King David, King Solomon, we was always in captivity. Why? Because we kept on breaking the commandments of God. So Esau, they was like, well, surely they were born to be slaves. So why are they rebelling? So this is the term that they coined. Read that for me, Lemuel. Drapetamonia. Uh, Drapetamonia was a con conjectural mental illness that, in 1851, American physician Samuel A. Cartwright uh, hypothesized as the cause of enslaved Africans fleeing captivity. Mm -hmm. Contemporarily reprinted in the South, Cartwright's article was widely mocked and satirized in the northern United States. Okay. The, Go ahead. The concept has since been debunked as pseudoscience Go ahead. and shown to be part of the edifice of scientific racism. Read. The term derives from the Greek drapetes a runaway slave and madness. madness. Frenzy. So basically, if you ran away from Esau, you were in madness. That's why when you go back to the article, it said how they were going crazy as as to why the slaves were rebellion. Of course, if you put people under that kind of those kind of conditions, you're going to rebel. Okay, let's go back to Amalek. Okay, read that. Let me well. Jewish anti-black lawmakers. The yellow star inscribed with the word Jew left has become a symbol of Nazi persecution of Jews in the World War II era. A 1941 decree required that Jews wear these badges within the Nazi occupied areas. The cloth badge was to be prominently displayed on every Jew's clothing for easy identification. So this is what was going on during the, the reign of Adolf Hitler. All right, we all heard about that story. All right, some of us was forced to read the diary of Anne Frank and so forth and watch Schindler's List and all of that, okay? But they tell you to forget your history, but remember theirs. Go ahead. A century earlier in Charleston, South Carolina, Jewish... So a century earlier, meaning a hundred years earlier 
in Charleston, South Carolina. Go ahead. Jewish Jewish constable Moses Levy or Levi reminded the population of the 1813 ordinance to regulate badges for Negroes. Mm, go ahead. His notice in the Southern Patriot newspaper warned that the regulation required that all Negroes or other slaves working out on hire shall wear the badge received from the city treasurer right uh, conspicuously about their person. So Negroes had to walk around. And I've seen some of these. If any of you ever get a chance to go to Philly, there's a museum called Lest We Forget. They had those badges there. I've seen them in real life. Go ahead. And it should be lawful for any person to command any Negro or other slave applying for hire or working out to produce his or her badge. Mm -hmm. Signed by Moses Levy, police officer. So if Moses Levy was an Amalekite. Go ahead. Violation of this pre-Nazi Nazi uh, Nazism meant corporal punishment for mm -hmm. blacks. In Charleston alone, several Jews were officially responsible for enforcing the slave badge ordinance. Go ahead. And for the apprehension and punishment of black people who wanted freedom more than slavery, Read. Mordecai Sheftal Jr. served as police chief in Savannah, Georgia mm -hmm. between 1849 and 1851. Savannah's other Jewish officials included Judges Levi S. DeLeon and Mordecai Sheftal Sr., five sheriffs and five clerks. Part of their sworn duties included the regulation of slaves and freedom. The regulation of slaves and freedoms, and they worked with the other Edomite Gentile nations. Look at the names. Louis Gomez, 1802, of Turnkey of Jail. It goes all the way down. Elisha, Moses, Morris, Nathan, Solomon, Samuel, Mark, Solomon, Moses Jr., Moses, Levi. Okay, get the next article. Go back up, go up, go up, uh, read that. Is there a title? Can we see the title or no? All right, go ahead. Guys, their identities and- Start at where it says virtually. virtually. I'm sorry. Virtually all whites shared a common desire to keep black blacks away from education. The ballot box and any hopes or dreams they have entertained about freedom, justice, equality, or independence. The Ku Klux Klan as an organization represented nothing, uh, nothing, no. So, uh, any southern blacks yeah. during slavery roving bands of whites called paddy patrollers paddy patrol paddy patrollers uh -huh. tormented all blacks enslaved and freed mm -hmm. taking lewd sadistic pleasure in the rape and torture of black men women and children the task of hunting down and persecuting runaway or rebellious blacks fell to the newest European immigrants, primarily the Irish. Mm -hmm. Go it, ahead. It was no effort at all for this menacing as, uh, assemblage of southern white rabble to exchange pre-war patty rolling. Go down so he could read it. For post-war night riding. Mm -hmm. Every white and Jewish male citizen. Every what? Every white and Jewish male citizen Go ahead. was expected to participate in the terrorism. Mm -hmm. And every citizen was expected to be particularly vigilant in upholding communal fidelity to cherish racial traditions. Mm. Read. Texas merchant slave. Texas merchant, merchant slave. Now you see. No, no. Go back. Go back. Go back. Don't jump the gun, brothers. You see right there where it says KKK notice causes Negroes to go to work or whatever, by the Associated Press. So like I said, these are real articles. These are not myths or comic books, okay? That's uh, Corsicana, Texas. How far is that? Corsicana. Corsicana. Where is that? About 40 miles south, no 45. About 40 miles south, okay? So is, there is a such thing as a Corsicana, whatever, yeah, Texas, Corsicana. right? Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Um, Texas merchant slave go down. Uh, okay, go ahead. Texas merchant slave owner. Slave we owner. read early about the merchants. Don't forget the thought in Hosea 12, verse 7. Read that again just in case we forgot the thought. Hosea chapter 12, verse 7. We read about the merchants. Now we're reading about the Amalekite merchants in this article. Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. He is a merchant. Come on. The balances of deceit are in his hand. So the balances of deceit are in their hands. Go ahead. They control the IMF and how much money is worth, where, or how much your dollar is worth compared to the U.S. dollar. Okay. The, the, um, the Federal Reserves. Okay. The um, former CEO was Alan Greenspan. I could go on and on. 
Go ahead. He loveth to oppress. He what? He loveth to oppress. Okay, so this merchant owner, read, slave owner, Indian killer, mm -hmm. Freemason, and devout Jew, Adolphus Stern, recorded in his diary his attendance at an 1841 meeting for the purpose of organizing a patrol to keep in due check the Negro population. To keep in due check the Negro population, read. His patrols checked on the blackies who he thought were getting rather too free. Damn. His patrols checked on the blackies. Damn. Now they call us cushy. Go ahead. This repressive function became especially critical mm -hmm. after the war when Southern whites were forced to remove overt discriminations from their constitutions. Go ahead. The original Klan targeted all signs of black pro progress. Black businesses were looted or destroyed. Mm -hmm. Organizers of black labor were beaten and murdered. Black owners of land desired by whites were driven off. Mm -hmm. Black re religious and political meetings were attacked. Schools established for blacks were burned to the ground, and black and white teachers were assaulted. Blacks who refused to work for whites and blacks who voted on who voted on juries, held office, or testified against whites were all under siege. The proud Ku Klux Klansman was moved to verse. Read. Niggers and Republicans, get out of the way. We're born of the night and we vanish by day. No rations have we but the flesh of man. And love niggers best, the Ku Klux Klan. We catch them alive and roast them whole. And hand them around with a sharpened pole. Damn, so they even had a song. Now you, now you read it live and direct. Right here. Now you know. Go ahead. But mass murder was the Klan's forte. And they were credited with... With spawning. spawning a wave of 1,300 killings of black citizens in 1868 alone. Mm -hmm. The fatality after the Civil War was on such a scale that some in the Klan. Next page. Is there a next page on that? Uh, no. Uh, go to the next one. Go to the next one. Read this right here. Because we just read about that. The guy that you mentioned, Adolf Strauss, right? That was his name? Huh? Uh, yes, sir. The guy that you mentioned. Go ahead. C. Archie P. McDonald, E. D. Hurra for Texas. Mm -hmm. Hurra for Texas. Hurra for Texas. Come on. The Diary of Adolphus Stern. So Eight. this this is what he wrote in the book. Waco, Texas, Texian Press, 1969. Okay, S go ahead. Stern notes the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur, page 50, 175. And so the reason, the reason he was talking about Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is what we call the Day of Atonement, what God calls the Day of Atonement. All right? This, he, the reason he has it recorded is because he was celebrating Yom Kippur. Why? Because he was an Amalekite. Go ahead. Texians Press... Stern notes that the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur and and records and record and records that he gave the Negro woman Susan a sound beating which she well deserved. Stern's diary is a casual walk through the world of slaveholding and Indian land theft with observations of the interactions among enslaved Africans, mm -hmm. Jews, Freemasons and Gentiles. And blacks are mentioned throughout. Okay. Uh, that's it right there. Go to the next one. Read that. Furthermore, in Roberta Strauss' Forelix, the fate of the Jews, a people torn between Israeli power and Jewish ethnics, she confronts the reality of her people's Western development. She confronts the reality of her people. That's why we said earlier we're going to read... We're gonna read um, their historical books and archaeological findings and newspapers. We're not gonna we're not gonna quote anything from anybody outside of the Amalekite nation. All right. She said her people's Western development. Go ahead. Whether so many Southern Jews would have achieved so high a level of social, political, economic, and intellectual status and recognition without the presence of the lowly and degraded slave is indeed dubious. You hear that? is indeed dubious. Come on. How ironic that the distinctions bestowed upon Jewish men like Judah P. Benjamin were in some measure dependent upon the sufferings of the Negro slaves they bought and sold with such equanimity. You hear that? So that ad, that uh, meme or picture that the brother Ice Cube put up 
with the, with the backs, the monopoly on the backs of so-called black men, he was absolutely correct because their own people, their own people are, are telling the truth about the matter. But it's you, it's the masses of black people that don't know. Okay, and they still look at these people as the true Israelites when they are not. Okay, uh, next one. And Southern American enterprises and eventually moved into the American Northeast. Just the bottom part. Columbus, Jews, and the slave trade. Come on. Not jewels, but Jews were the real financial basis of the first expedition of Columbus. Next. George Cohen, among many Jewish historians. George who? George Cohen. So we're talking about Amalek, right? Amongst many Jewish historians, go ahead, proclaims that wealthy Jews financed the expeditions of Columbus. Mm, come on. And adds that the story of Isabella's jewels is not founded on fact. The story of Isabella Jewels is that the, the queen herself financed the, the slave trade with her jewelry, her riches, whatever she had, but that's not so. Go ahead. But rather, it was an invention intended to glorify the queen. Next one. Can you read Cecil that? Cecil Roth's mm -hmm. History of the Moranos. Mm -hmm. The connection between the Jews and the discovery of America was not, however, merely a question of fort fortuitous coincidence. The epic-making expedition of 1492 was, as a matter of fact, very largely a Jewish or rather a Murano enterprise. The Muranos were considered Sephardic Jewish people, and you also had Negroes over there because we were in Spain as well during what's called the Spanish Inquisition. Read. Columbus, the Jew? A few scholars, including Roth, present strong evidence that Columbus was himself a Jew. Come on. He hid his Jewishness. Like many of us did. Even you had Negroes doing the same thing. They called them crypto Jews. All right. Meaning they, they practice uh, Judaism or the Torah behind closed doors. But outwardly, they were Christians, modern day Christianity and, and other religions. Go ahead. He hid his Jewishness, they mm -hmm. say, because no Spanish Jew could ever have expected aid from the king and queen of Spain. Come on. So the explorer claimed to be an, Intal an Italian Catholic. That's why a lot of people think that Cristobal Colon is Italian. OK, but he's not. Go ahead. Tina Leviton, author of Jews in American Life, found the first reference to Columbus Jewishness in print in a diplomatic document dated 50, 58 years after the discoverer's next page. Death. Mm -hmm. The French ambassador to Spain, she reveals, refers to Columbus the Jew. Mm. Go ahead. Furthermore, she states, from him we learn that Cristobal Colon who never called himself Christopher Columbus and never spoke or wore Italian or wrote Italian. Excuse me, or wrote, if we could blow it up, wrote Italian himself, wrote Italian was the son of Susanna Fontanorosa, also spelled Fonta, Fontarosa, and Domingo Colon of Pontevedra, Spain, where those bearing those bearing such sur uh, surnames were Jews, mm -hmm. some of who had been bought before the Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. Letters written by him to strangers have the customary X at the top to indicate the faith of the right of the writer. Mm. So there was a certain thing that um, Am Amalek was doing back then. They would use the, the X as a signature. Go ahead. But of the 13 letters written to his son, only one bears an X. Mm -hmm. And that letter was meant to be shown to the king of Spain. Mm -hmm. The others have in the place of the X uh -huh. a sign that looks like the Hebrew characters B and H. All right. Mm -hmm. Initials used by religious Jews, meaning in Hebrew, with the help of God. The B would stand for Baruch or Bar Baruch, and the H would stand for Hashem. Okay, meaning um, depending on the context that you're using it, is either blessed God or um, thank God, okay, or like they say, with the help of God, when you say Baruch Hashem. Okay, go ahead. Harry L. Golden and Martin Rywo, authors of Jews in American History, mm -hmm. their contribution to the United States of America, are quite insistent about the Jewishness of Columbus. Come on. They cite here Ferdinand Columbus' son writes that his father's progenitors were of the blood royal of Jerusalem. Go ahead. In Columbus's words, for when all is done, David, that most prudent king, was first a shepherd and afterwards 
afterwards, chosen, chosen king of Jerusalem. Come on. And I am a servant of that same Lord mm -hmm. who raised him to such a dignity. So these are the words of Columbus himself. Go ahead. One Jewish author insists that all existing portraits of the discoverer gave him a Jewish cast of countenance. Go ahead. Another claim that a certain soft heartedness in Columbus is a Jewish trait. And there's no certain soft heartedness in Columbus because we know what we did to the natives. Go ahead. His lineage also pointed to Jewish roots. Mm -hmm. His mother's maiden name was Susanna Fonterosa, daughter of Jacob, granddaughter of Abraham and a Jewess. Mm. Go ahead. His father, Domingo Colon, was a map seller. Go ahead. Did not Columbus write the king of Spain that his ancestors were interested in maps? Okay. Drop that. Is there more? Right there. I think that's the last one. Go ahead. Christopher Columbus was an experienced sailor long before his infamous voyage west. Mm -hmm. Sir Arthur Helps writes that in the course of his letters, Columbus speaks after the fashion of a practiced slave dealer. Remember in the movie 1492, remember what he said. Remember who he quoted? He quoted Esdras. Remember, he was speaking, what was that, King Ferdinand? He was speaking to somebody, and they, and they told him, how do you know they're over there? And he, and he was like, well, this person, that person, and he said, Esdras. Okay, so he was well known with maps and different stuff, and the Torah and the Tanakh. Go ahead. In fact, in 1498, his five-ship expedition brought 600 Indians to Spain as slaves. So his ships brought 600 Indians to Spain as slaves. Go ahead. 200 were given to the masters of the ships and 400 sold in Spain. Come on. Columbus employed slave labor in gold mining even before sailing for the New World. Go ahead. He helped to start the Portuguese West African slave labor settlement of San Jorge El Mina. St. Uh, George of the Mines mm -hmm. in present-day Ghana, mm. formerly known as the Gold Coast. Yes, they were known as the Gold Coast, but Esau took all of their gold, and we've been to Elmina as well. Read. When the Spaniards found gold in the New World, reports Eric Rosenthal in his book Gold, Gold, Gold. Eric Rosenthal, another Amalekite. I didn't hear one black name yet, so we can't get called anti-Semitic, although we are Semitic. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's their own that's revealing this truth. Go ahead. The Johannesburg Gold Rush. They started on a gold hunt of such intensity that the natives came to believe the white men suffered from some disease curable only by the limitless application of this metal when Columbus discovered that. Wow, so they said this man's greed was so much, was ridiculous that he suffered from some disease that was curable only by the limitless application of this metal. Get me Obadiah. Get me Obadiah. If thieves came to thee, mm -hmm. if robbers by night, mm -hmm. how art thou cut off? Uh -huh. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? So God said, would they not have stolen till they had enough? And the historians are saying the same thing. It says, on a gold hunt of such intensity that the natives came to believe the white man suffered from some disease curable only by the limitless application of this metal. Because all he wanted was gold, gold, gold. It was like, damn, it, it, can gold cure some kind of sickness that you might have? You think you might come take two, three, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 100. But this man took everything. Go ahead. When Columbus discovered that apart from some poor alluvial deposits, mm -hmm. the gold simply did did not exist. Go ahead. He forced the harmless Indian Aborigines into slavery. Mm. The entire importation of gold from the New World for the first 20 years after 1492 represented in cash only $300,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And the total then recovered worth about $5 million, cost at least one and a half million Indian lives. Wow. Read. Columbus was anything but a blessing to the New World mm. population. The Europeans, led by Columbus, brought unprecedented brutality to the West, leaving the remains of whole... Is there another one? Next article. Whole communities of red people in their wake. And they're not wake. red people. The natives are not red people. Esau is the red people. We read about that in Genesis 25, verse 25. Read. On Hispanola... Just minimize it. On you his, can read it. You on can his, read it. 
On Hispanola, Columbus found gold in a docile Arawak population. Mm -hmm. He lavished praise on the natives and gained their trust and affection and then proceeded to enslave them. Read. According to Columbus, they are without arms, all naked and without skill at arms and great cowards. Damn. Come on. A thousand running away from three and thus they are good to be ordered about. To a be thousand running away from three. Isn't that scriptural? Mm -hmm. Who knows the scripture? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight? Thank you. Who's that? Who's that? Karim? Karim. I had that brother sharp. Yeah. Karim is sharp. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. How should one chase a thousand mm -hmm. and two put 10,000 to flight? Mm -hmm. Except their rock had sold them. Except their rock has sold them. Come on. And the Lord has shut them up. And the Lord has shut them up. The Most High is the one that put that fear in us. To have a thousand. Read that again. Read the book again. A th they are without arms, all naked and without skills at arms and great cowards. Mm -hmm. A thousand running away a from three. A thousand running away from three. We just read that in the scriptures. Yes, the Bible's a real book. Come on. And thus they are good to be ordered about, mm -hmm. to be made to work, plant, and do whatever is wanted, mm -hmm. to build towns and be taught to go clothed and accept our customs. Come on, and accept our customs. Come on. Cities began to spring up all over the island of, island of Hispanola. Come on. The traffic in slaves, African and Indian, grew rapidly. Go ahead. And some Jews were engaged in this trade as agents for the royal families of Spain and Portugal. Read. Whether or not Columbus was a Jew, as so many Jewish historians now claim, has not been def definitively proven. Because you have opposing sides. You have people that say, nah, he was a talent. And you have people that say, no, he was, he was a Jew. Go ahead. However, it is clear that Columbus bru Columbus's brutality against and enslavement of the indigenous population was financed by Jewish investors. Mm. Come on. The history books appear to have confused the word Jews for the word jewels. Mm. The history books appear to have confused the word Jews for the word jewels. Come on. Queen Isabella's jewels had no part in the finance of Columbus's expedition. But who? But her Jews did. But Amalek did. And now they try to hide their hands. They done threw the stone out there, hit Judah and Ephraim upside the head. And now they say, no, we, 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 we are not part of that dragon. We have done no wrong. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They ain't getting away with that. They are not getting away with that. Now, get me the article on, um, get me uh, George Soros real quick. Get me George Soros. Get me George Soros. Go down. So we all know who George Soros is. We all know who he's backing up, right? Who is he backing? Who is he funding? Black Lives Matter. Go down. I just want to show one thing. I just pulled it for one thing. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Early life and education. Mm -hmm. Soros was born in Budapest in the kingdom of Hung Hungary to a prosperous, non-observant Jewish family. Okay, close it out. All right. Get me, um, get me the article on, um, that I sent to you about lies. Lies, 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 lies. While they're getting that, Officer Yakub, I want you to get me Proverbs chapter 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. The lip of truth shall be established forever. The what? The lip of truth shall be established forever. The lips of truth shall be established forever, meaning God's laws shall always be established forever. The Most High will make manifest not only his commandments, the truth about the Bible, the truth about who we are as a people, right? And the truth about who, who he died for. Go ahead. But a lying tongue. But a lying tongue. Is but for a moment. But the lying tongue is just for a moment. Although it may look like it's prospering. Although it may look like the whole world fell for the okie doke. Guess what? God said it's just but for a moment. That's why Jesus Christ said what? There's nothing that that is hid that not that shall not be made what revealed manifest god is going to use his people his soldiers his israelites to bring forth this truth and that's exactly what we're doing today and what we've been doing 
Okay, let's read this. How liars create the illusion of truth. How liars create the, the illusion, the illusion of truth. Come on. Repetition makes a fact seem more true, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it is or not. Repetition. Repetition, brothers. Repetition makes a fact seem more true, regardless of whether it is or not. Go ahead. Understanding this effect can help you avoid falling for propaganda, says psychologist Tom Stafford. Mm -hmm. So what kind of propaganda do we see going on now? What kind of propaganda, Officer, Officer Shema? What propaganda do we see? Tom, they say they, every time something go wrong with the uh, Amalekites, they, they shout out anti-Semitic. Okay, anti -Semitic. That's, that's one. What else? Um, saying that we're not the Israelites, we're not the Jews. They do that too. Okay, what else? Um, what type of propaganda? Um, let me give it to somebody else. You got a yaku? Black Lives Matter. What else? That's that's the one I came up with. There's more. There's more than that you're leaving out. Okay. That we've been seeing in the news. What else? Zef, Officer Zef. Yeah, I had Black Lives Matter too. They okay, they call us a cult. Black uh, Hebrew Israelites, right, a cult. Right. They putting it out there. It's a repetition. Right. They're going to keep putting it out there to make everybody oh. believe, to put a stain on the resurrection of the Israelites. So nobody's going to want to repent. Nobody's going to want to join. But God says they are going to fail. All right, lying lips, but for a moment. And how do they do that? Give me Ezra. Ezra 5, verse 73. They use the media. They use the mouth of the beast, the media, to do that. Give me Ezra chapter 5 and verse 73. The book of First Ezra, chapter 5 and verse 73. Mm -hmm. And by their secret plots uh -huh. and popular persuasion and commotion, Go ahead. they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So by their secret plots and popular persuasion, how are you or how are you able to persuade people? Through media. Through media, that constant repetition of media. All right? Let's get back to this. Read. Repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. Repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. We are the Israelites. You are black, black Hebrew cults. You are black Israelites. You're the Negroes, African American. I need Yehudi. They keep repeating that. Everybody believes them. The whole earth believes them. Go ahead. Is a law of propaganda often attributed to the Nazi Joseph Goebbels. Go ahead. Among psychologists, something like this known as the illusion of truth effect. Uh -huh. Here's how a typical experiment on the effect works. Go ahead. Participants rate how true trivia items are. Things like a prune is a dry plum. Go ahead. Sometimes these items are true, like that one. But sometimes participants see a parallel version, which isn't true. Go ahead. Something like a date is a dry plum. After a break of minutes or even weeks, the participants do the procedure again. But this time, some of the items they rate are new. And some they saw before in the first phase. The key finding is that people tend to rate items they've seen before as more likely to be true, regardless of whether they are true or not. And seemingly for the sole reason that they are more familiar. Come on. So, here, captured in the lab, seems to be the source for the saying that if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you look around yourself, you may start to think that everyone from adverse, from adverse advertisers, advertisers. to polit politicians are taking advantage of this foible of human psychology. Come on. But a reliable effect in the lab isn't necessarily an important effect on people's real world beliefs. Mm -hmm. If you really could make a lie sound true by repetition, there'd be no need for all the other techniques of persuasion. Okay, close this out. So that was a technique uh, used um, in World War II, so they say. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Because they said repetition, in order to make a lie a lie a truth, you must use repetition. Let's start in the back. Brother, right there, right in front of Shaul, to your left. You stand up, my brother. Hey, shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom. Most high in Christ, Most bless. Christ bless. Hey, what countries were involved in World War II? Uh, you got 
Uh, just name one. Yeah, what? Russia? Germany? Okay. Uh, who was somebody that we often hear about? Uh, Hitler. Hitler. Okay. Okay, very good. All right. And how many how many um, Amalekites died? How many white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites died? What did they say? Two million or something like that? Okay. Give it to the next brother. How many long leadership. Hey, Most High in Christ bless. How many uh how many Amalekites died? Uh they say six thousand six million. Okay. Pass it to the next brother. Shalom. 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 Most high in Christ bless. What year did World War II end? Nineteen forty five. Very good. How many Amalekites they said died? Six million. Okay. Uh pass it to the brother in front of you with the dreads. What's your name, brother? Brother Shaka. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom. How many Amalekites? Died? Uh, six million. Six million. Go ahead. Okay. Brother, Brother right Bolo. there. Brother Bolo. Yes, Most High in Christ bless. Most high in Christ um, bless. How many Amalekites died during World War II? I thought it was 60 million. Uh, six. Six million. Not 60. Hell no, <laughs> not 60. Uh, pass it to the brother in, in front of you right there. All right, what, what have you Show heard? leadership. Most High in Christ bless. Most High in Christ bless. How many people? Died. Six million. Six million. All right. Everybody's saying six. Hmm. Repetition, right? Everybody's saying the same thing. Now, why are you saying six? That's what I heard when I was in high school. That's what you heard when yes, you sir. were in, in high school, right? Yes, sir. Were you forced to read the diary of Anne Frank as yes, well? Sir. Like I was? I had yes, to write sir. a summary on that thing. And I did it, I did it joyfully. I hey, I almost shed it. I think I shed it a tear. Damn, I had the devil on me. I had, they got me. I had the damn devil on me. Pass it to the brother right next to you. What's your name, brother? Shalom, brother Matthew. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. How many people died during World War II? Or well, what's the number that you heard? People total or? Uh, people total, whatever you heard. Come on, give me a number. Say something. 50 million. 50, you, you heard 50 million? People you, total. I'm all, talking about the, Amalek. Amalek is 6 million. Okay. We're talking about Amalek. We're not talking about people. We're not talking about everybody. Pass it to the brother in front of you. Very good. So, so far, we're all on the same boat, right? Shalom, brother. How many died. people died? How many Amalekites died? I've heard 6 million. I've 6 heard. million. Why is everybody in? And you're all from different states, different backgrounds. Did, all, did you guys grow up together? In the same neighborhood? Did y'all attend the same school? All the brothers that said six million. Did y'all attend the same school? But notice your upbringing, your education, everything was taught, the things that were taught to you was six million, six million, six million, six million, six million, six million. You wake up in the morning, you're saying six million. You go to go play the lotto, you put in six, six. You're not knowing why you're doing that because it's been programmed. Watch this. Get me the first article, please. Okay, so read this loud, and I want the dates. When was World War II? 1939 and ended in 1945. 1939 ended in 1945. Read. Zionist mass meeting. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Wise's address. New York Times, June 11th, 1900. June 11th, what year was this? 1900. 1900, about 40 to 50 years prior to World War II. World War I didn't even take place yet. Read. Rabbi Wise's address. Rabbi Wise said, in part, the day will never come when I will care less for Zion. Come on. When there will be anyone who will strive more for the glorious ideals of Zionism. Go ahead. Two great conventions of Jews are being held tonight. Mm -hmm. In Chicago, there is a conference of charities called together by men who minister to the wants of the poor. They have assembled to see that too much charity is not given to the unworthy. Go ahead. Their purpose is right. Mm -hmm. But ours is the greater charity. Mm -hmm. We have assembled not to see that the Jew does not get too much. Come on. But that every Jew shall get the right to live. Read. There are six million living, bleeding, suffering arguments in favor of Zionism. Six million. We're reading an article that came out from the Daily News, right? The Daily News, it said. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. The New York, New York Times. Times. New York Times. June 11th. 1900. 
They're already, they're already in talk of six million. Go down. Give me the next one. Give me the next one. Blow this up. This is the Encyclopedia Brit Britannica, 1902. Entry for anti-Semitism. 1902, entry for anti-Semitism. Read where it says though. Start at though. Though anti-Semitism has been unmasked and discredited, it is to be feared that its history is not yet at an end. While there remains in Russia and Romania ever six millions of Jews Go ahead. who are being systematically degraded and who periodically overflow the Western frontier, mm -hmm. there must continue to be a Jewish question in Europe. Go ahead. And while there are weak governments and ignorant and su superstitious elements in the infract Enfranchise. Enfranchise classes of the countries affected, that question will seek to play a part in politics. Next. So you had 1900, now you had 1902 in the Encyclopedia. The word again, six mil million. It's a repetition. It's a repetition of this number. Now, could that have been the population over there in um, Eastern Europe of, of Amalek? Possibly. That could have been the population in all of Europe. But how come from the time of the late 1800s, the early 1900s, all the way to 1945, there was no decrease or increase in your population? So nobody had kids? Nobody died? You don't find that strange? They were talking about six million way before World War II. Way before World War II. Go ahead. New York Times, 1857 to current file. Come on. Ju January 29th, 1905. Go ahead. End of Zionism, maybe. Jewish preacher's view of uprising in Russia. Come on. The Reverend Dr. M.H. Harris spoke in the Temple Israel, 5th Avenue and 125th Street, mm -hmm. yesterday morning at the regular services on the Russian situation. Go ahead. He prefaced his remarks by reference to the Testaments and to history to show that the people had gradually received a larger sphere of freedom from nations and governments for the exercise of their powers and duties. Read. He declared that a free and a happy Russia with its six million Jews mm -hmm. would possibly mean the end of Zionism. Come on. Since the abolition of the autocracy would practically eliminate the causes that brought Zionism into existence. So we read about six million again. Go to the top. Let me get the date. Go to the top. So you read about six million again in, in Jan January 29th, 1905. We read about six million once again. If that's the total current population, so who are the people in, um, in Israel today? If everybody, if that's the population and you're saying it was six million that died in the Holocaust, who are the people in Israel today? Shouldn't six million be your, your, your population, the totality of your population of people who died? It's, I'm telling you, it's just, it's, cra it's craftiness. Secret plots, propaganda, public persuasions, craftiness, evil as hell. Go ahead, go to the next page. Read that. Chief. Procurator Read the date at the bottom first and the article. The, Where is it from? Oh, published November, uh, the New York Times. Published November 1st, 1905. Go ahead. Chief Procurator of the Holy Synod, Most Hated Man in Russia. Mm -hmm. St. Petersburg, October 31st. Mm -hmm. Konstantin Petrovich. Don't worry about the last name. Go ahead. Chief Procurator of the Holy Synod has resigned. Konstantin Petrovich now in his 78th year, has been a prominent factor in the internal life of the Russian Empire for the last 50 years. Come on. And is the most hated man in Russia today. Read. Since his appointment as a procurator, general of the Holy Synod in 1880, uh -huh. he has persecuted the Jews, Lutherans, Catholics, and other dissenting sects with an unweight unwavering fanatical zeal unswerving un excuse me unswerving fanatical zeal go ahead from 1800 to 18 1902 uh -huh. he caused six million jewish families it says from 1890 is that 1800 or 1890 18 18 1890 to, to 1902 to 1902 he caused what he caused six million jewish families to be expelled from russia and sent thousands of 
Poles to Siberia. To, to Siberia. Poles to Siberia. Y'all, y'all reading this? So from 1890 to 1902, six, mil, six million was displaced. And you trying to tell me nobody populated, nobody died. Those same six million from the late 1800s and early 1900s were the same, is the same figure that you're saying died in the Holocaust? I smell bull. That's what I smell. I smell bull, okay? Secret plots, popular persuasion, illusion, a lie told often, a lie with, that, that, that becomes repetitious, everybody falls for it. Next. Is there more? There's one more. Go ahead. The New York Times published March 25th, 1906. Mm -hmm. Dr. Paul Nathan's view of Russian massacre. Come on. Startling reports of the condition and future of Russia's six million Jews. These are all different newspapers, and they're all saying the same thing from different time periods. They just stuck on that number six, and that is their number. That is their number. So guess what? They got it right there. It's befitting of them to hold that number six so dearly. Go ahead. Six million Jews were made on March 12th in Berlin to the annual meeting of the Central Jewish Relief League of Germany by Dr. Paul Nathan, Mm -hmm. a well-known Berlin publicist who has returned from an extensive trip through Russia as the special emissary, emissary of Jewish Philanthropist. 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 Good Lord, have mercy. I'm Come sorry. on, read right. Come on, man. Philanthropist in England, America, and Germany uh-huh. to arrange for distribution of the relief fund of one million five hundred thousand raised dollars raised after though massacres last autumn. All right, that's it right there. That's it right there. Is there one more? And I found millions of articles. All right, that's it right there. Okay. Okay, get me um get me revelation. I want revelation. No, actually no. I don't want revelation. Just get me Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Yes, sir. Titus chapter 1 verse 14. The book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 14. Come on. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Don't give heed to Amalekite fables, brothers. Okay, fact checked everything. Don't give heed to Jewish fables. They tell you God is white, that they're the people of God, and you're just nobodies. You're just some niggas, some African Americans. Not so. Go ahead. And commandments of men Mm -hmm. that turn from the truth. That turn you from the truth. Because you've got our people worshiping them and looking at them like they are the sons, the true sons of the living God. So they're turning you from the laws of God, turning you from your your self-identity. That's exactly what they're doing. Okay, um, get me the video. There's two videos. Play the first one. All right, we're gonna wrap it up on this. He was black. Who's playing Tony? Jesus. They all were black. Yeah. Remember the scripture said that the God made Adam from the dust of the ground. What color is dust? Black. Black. Eve from Adam's rib, so she grows black too. So she was black. Yeah. I don't know. I know it's overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I don't know where to go. I know. I don't know where to go. I know. It's about to give up the ghost. Like hell, now I've been lied to all my life. So just think what people are going to think when they realize that Christ is black and that all these other nations have done all these calamities to his children. It's going to be pretty scary, huh? It is scary. It's very scary. Well, gosh. telling you something that most people don't realize. No, I don't. I don't realize it at all. I know. You must be very religious. No, I'm not religious.
purchase it all. I mean, my nationality, I'm a Jew, you know, so those customs are, that's our heritage, you know. So, you know, we keep the Sabbath, you know, the dietary laws, we keep all the high holy days, you know, the dress code, all of those things. You got dirt on you. It's from my feet. Yes, yeah, okay. I'm looking at you here, thin as a rail. <laughs> here, I'll just... Next video. That's the Bible. That was Revelations 1, 14. Revelations. Yeah. So if you put anything in a furnace, what happens to it? Burns. It burns, yeah. So John is giving a description of Christ. You don't know what to say. Okay, you gonna finish me up? I'm done, buddy. <laughs> I'm done, buddy. That's it. And this is this is the reaction that they're afraid of worldwide. There was a video that the bishop did uh, a couple of years ago called um, Herod, Khazars, and Idumia. That got taken down. Y'all don't realize that? That's not on IUIC in the classroom. You had other people who uploaded it, but IUIC in the classroom had a majority of the views. And you know where you know where it was taken down, where it was banned? In all the common markets. When you look at all the countries that banned it, in all the common markets, they banned that class. Why? Because it spoke truth in volumes. All right, get me Psalms 108. Psalms 108. The book of Psalms, chapter 108 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Who will bring me into the strong city? So who's going to bring us into the strong city? Of course, we know Christ. Okay? This class is, is, is specifically about truth. I don't want nobody to get the wrong idea, go try to retaliate. No. Christ said we're supposed to be at peace with all nations, including Amalek, who God says we shall have war with from generation to generation. Now, it's not a physical war. It's a spiritual war now. Y'all brothers understand? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Who will lead me into Edom? Who will lead us into Edom? God is going to lead us into Edom. When that time come, when Christ come back, we well, look, when he's here, that's when we're going to take down all of Esau. Go ahead. Would not thou, O God, who has cast us off? And will not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? You hear that? Go forth with our hosts, meaning the armies of God, the chariots with Christ standing right there. So nobody get any foolish ideas. Give me Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62, last scripture. One to two. The book of Isaiah. Actually, no. Don't get me one to two. Get me, um, I want Isaiah 62. Let's see where I want to start. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Start at verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. You hear that? For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. Go ahead. And for Jerusalem's sake mm -hmm. I will not rest mm -hmm. until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Jump down. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. But they that have gathered it shall jump, eat. Jump to verse 11. I'm sorry. Verse 11. Verse 11. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of ah, Zion. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Jump to. Saw that verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Go through. Mm -hmm. Go through the gates. Come on. Prepare ye the way of so the So this is our job now. As we go out onto these highways and byways is to prepare. Bring the people in. Compel the people to come in and repent. Go ahead. Cast up. Mm -hmm. Cast up the highway. Go on to the highways and byways. Go ahead. Gather out the stones. Come on. Lift up a standard for the people. The standard is the Bible. Come on. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Go ahead. Say ye to the daughter of Zion. Come on. Behold, thy salvation cometh. Brothers, your salvation cometh. Come on. Behold, his reward is with him. Go ahead. And his work before him. Read. And they shall call them mm -hmm. the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Who's going to call us the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord? All the other nations. Every single last one of them. They're going to recognize that we are the children of God. And you know when that starts? That starts now. That started yesterday. That doesn't start just when Christ cracks the sky. That started yesterday. Ever since you woke up, you put it on these fringes, you're growing a beard, you're keeping the commandments of, of God, the dietary laws, the civil moral laws. 
Guess what? The other nations are going to look at you like, surely these people are the people of God. Come on. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. And we will not ever, ever be forsaken. Okay? And we're never going to go back into slavery ever, ever, ever again. That's right. Okay? And with that, we're going to close it out, brothers. Most high in Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.